All right, test one, two, three, one, two, three. We are good to go. Everybody here is Loki. Oh, up. He just got back from outside. That's why I'm like, I'm right on time and not like five minutes early like normal. But he's going crazy with this little ball thing. If I can grab it from him. Yeah. This thing. Don't know why, but Loki loves it. Oh, oh Jesus, dude. Okay. He's in love with that ball today. That's okay. We're in love with Bitcoin today. That's even better, right? So right now, Bitcoin started a small breakout here after the last few minutes, and I'm kind of waiting to see what happens next. But really, we're going off of this boom that we're seeing here so far today, and today is like a big day where we're going to be testing out resistances and things of that nature. So it's going to be a longer stream, probably a good hour and a half to two hours tonight, maybe longer, depending on um, what exactly happens. If we start to stagnate or something like that, you know, we, we, we can figure that out when it comes down to uh, <laughs> down to it. But hey, Pablo, happy to see you back, man. If you guys haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe. It always helps with the channel. And any comment that you guys do also helps with the channel. It doesn't matter if you're spamming the comments or whatever. I'm going to start just telling you guys that right off the bat. Spam, like, it, it does a lot. And most of all, just try to watch as long as you can. And if you guys have a question, feel free to let me know. Now, uh, I can't pronounce your name, but hello to you as well. Before we get started... Just over the past few days, we do know that Bitcoin's been going up. We've been seeing some nice stuff. And so far, what we're going to be doing today, again, is going to be adding on some swing trades working our way and maybe some day trades. Uh, I need to fund this account more with BYD5. They're a sponsor of the channel. So if you guys are looking for a new exchange, go over and check them out. They got some really good deals and, you know, uh, pretty much good bonuses when you guys move some money over there. Anyway, now we did do a couple of... Uh, Couple trades here yesterday just to kind of feel out the market. They're very small trades until I move out more money in here. However, we got it. We got mixed results, I would say. Uh, the ocean, that one's up a teeny bit. This was a 2x play. This is more of a longer term type of play. The two more uh, swing trades that we're looking at are going to be NMR, which is down 22% with the 10x leverage. So it's really just down 2%. And the other one here is Rune. Let me get rid of this very fast. I, I know I can get a bonus. Ah. There you go. And the other one is Rune. Rune on the 10X is actually up 50%, so it's up around 5% basically. And we're trying to play the percentage game here until I can fund this count a little bit more, but things are working out okay. The other long-term ones, Ape and Matic that we were talking about, they're both doing fine. I told you guys about Matic, Bonk, and I think a couple other ones yesterday. They seem to be doing very well. Uh, I think the one that really surprised me was Bonk. I, I know I told you guys about, hey, we're going to be breaking above the... 20 day moving average, that's gonna be a really cool thing. Well, we did, but normally I would expect a breakout and maybe one or two days of grinding and then another breakout. We frankly just spiked all the way up to the 50 day moving average, got rejected, now we're breaking above it today again. So Bonk is having a pretty sizable move. The one thing I just remind you guys, when I see a move like this, I really don't feel an incentivized to really buy back in again for something more of a day trade. Especially because if you zoom out, you can see how high this thing has gone. You can see right here, excuse me, there is a little bit of a breakout. That's what we're looking for right now. Those breakouts above the moving averages. And excuse me. I just chugged a bunch of um water. Uh, so even though, yeah, a bunch of water, geez. But anyway, uh, I will be lighting up a good old uh, stogie here pretty soon or a cigar if I can find one. Oh, I got a small one right here. I've been getting into my little small cigar selection. And I got my, of course, my Lancer, which is still a small ring gauge, but still pretty good. So... We're going to be smoking one, if not both, of those tonight as we kind of chill out, kind of look to see what's going on. I'll answer you guys' questions, and we can kind of vibe and see what's moving and what's not. There has not been a huge move in altcoins yet, and I'm patiently waiting for it. We've seen some spikes here and there. We've seen some slow grinders, but we haven't seen a strong move just yet. When I was talking to you guys about Matic yesterday, I was hoping we might have a little bit more of a move. But so far, if I find it over here, what you guys are seeing is Matic. It did break out above the 50 here. It was a small pump at best, a small move, and now we're still chugging along and trying to make our way back up here to 90 cents. So I'm basically, you know, watching, but if we kind of go over here to the 50 minute chart, you'll see that it's just been kind of this weird grind over the last 24 hours. So we were talking about buying some over here, I think around like seven. Oh, I don't even remember. So Thursday. Yeah, I think I streamed last night at a decent time, I think. <laughs> Sorry, I have, it's been a long week, but... You know, some of the night, you load up around here. It seems to be working. It's just not having that pop effect. And, you know, if you go over to the hour chart, it actually does look very nice. It's just I'm waiting for something 
big. And so I'm going to keep on holding some of my positions in there. I was hopeful that XRP could make a continued move. Again, it's doing fine. It's not bad, but I'm hoping for something more of a pop because ever since the breakout that we were talking about, let's go back over here. You know, it's up around 2.68%. Let me move that over there. You know, it's it's moving, but it's not really popping just yet. So I think we still have an opportunity. My big fear here for a lot of altcoins is please, Bitcoin, don't get rejected off of this big wall coming up in a very uh, flashy way. You know, if we get rejected, let it consolidate a little bit more than try again. Let's not have a complete crash. And that'll keep uh, altcoins um, with a great opportunity to continue popping up. Once Bitcoin dominance slows down just a little bit, because right now it's pumping up a lot more compared to altcoins, you should see altcoins have a surge. And I'm hoping that by buying over the like the last few days and even today and tomorrow, we'll have an opportunity to get a piece of that surge. So far, we've only had small opportunities, I would say, like, you know, with the small moves we've talk, been talking about. We've had some um, some things that, you know, outside that box, like a bonk, which kind of just zoomed, or an ID token, which is just really just zoomed. Um, a couple other things I would say are... I'm always keeping track of some of these AI tokens just to kind of see what's going on. They so far have not been moving crazy, but you've been seeing some decent pops like Fetch AI, pretty decent move yesterday. I'm not going to call it parabolic, but from you know, open to close, it was up around 9%. That's the type of move I'm looking for. Again, not necessarily crazy, but that's a good move for one day when Bitcoin is also breaking out. This is what you want to see. You want to see those larger moves coming from um, altcoins. Uh, I just wish it was coming from the larger market caps and not just the smaller market caps. Ajax right here. This is something I've been loading on for a while now, and it looks like it's just turning pretty profitable. We are at a level of resistance, but I'm hoping it could pop from 30 cents, 31 cents, basically, and shoot up towards 34. That would be a great opportunity. Now, uh, let me go over here also to another sponsor, Fairdesk, and we're going to go over some of the trades I've been adding on to. So far, they're doing good. Okay, my bonk finally turned positive. I've been dollar cost averaging bonk ever since it started coming down. So I was down for a while. Only now after it popped 20% am I now profitable. I can live with that because it's kind of a long-term hold, but sometimes it just it, it's just like that <laughs> with dollar cost averaging. Now, there's a few other trades out there. I know my head's blocking some of them, but just bear with me. You're seeing a lot more green in here, although there's still plenty of red. So I'm going to be patiently waiting for quite a bit of time before... My account goes and soars again uh, before the drops we saw a few weeks ago this account was probably at 500 to 700 dollars then it went down 500 to like 900 dollars and now we're down to negative 200 dollars um, so we're kind of in a, a mixed um, uh, a mixed results type of thing right now for these long-term bets ajax is up ach is up bonk is up amb surprisingly is up all of a sudden ape token is still down a lot big time is still down BT, uh, Bitcoin is still doing fine, of course. Seller is down. But then you got stuff like Front, which is up 24%. Uh, what else is like actually up right now? Pendle is up quite a bit. I don't know. if Did I just buy Pendle yesterday? Yeah, I just bought it yesterday, and it's already up 26% on a 2x uh, trade. So Pendle, this is something where you catch the momentum and you try to play it up to resistance level. Um, this is more of a long-term play for me, so I'm not actually going to sell right now. But when you see plays like this, it's kind of nice just to say, hey, it popped, let's sell. I If I actually had more money in this, I probably would sell. But since it's only like the first um, salvo into a dollar cost averaging campaign here, I'm reluctantly going to just not sell here and see where it goes. But right as the breakout, you see the consolidation, higher highs, uh, higher lows, excuse me, waiting for a pump with Bitcoin and then boom, you see the move. Uh, so far, pretty a pretty decent move here. It's rare that I get that nice bottom price. But anyway, uh, we'll be looking at different stuff here over the next few days and um, hours, I guess, even more so. Let me go over here to the weekly chart. Now, this chart looks kind of funky, I know, just because of the wick we had before. We'll see how much higher we want to go. This just looks weird, but again, doesn't matter at this point. There's enough buyers to really get everything going. Today, Bitcoin is really just going to struggle to break above that resistance level that we've been talking about. Let me repost this just so you guys know what's going on, though. So, horizontal ray. If you guys are using the Bitcoin Tether chart, it looks like it's going to be around 48,969. That's going to be the level to break out. We are fairly close right now. You know, we're decent enough. It's a little under a thousand bucks, basically. But since we've been going up quite a bit over the last few days, there's definitely an opportunity here. Let me, well, let me just do this very fast. 15 minute chart. Auto. There we go. We're about 1500 bucks away from resistance. 
it's okay if we consolidate and we start moving higher and higher. The one thing basically is we just don't want to break down below any of those larger time frame um, moving averages. Since Bitcoin moved up today and um, yesterday, we're not in any real danger of that. Um, if you guys see a 50 moving average on the four hour chart creeping up, that's only when I'd be concerned. And if you guys can see, you know, we are quite a quite a bit away from that. So no real concerns there. Momentum is on our side. We've started a consolidation period, which means this is really the opportunity for those of you guys that want to buy Bitcoin. This is another opportunity right here. Um, typically, the way I've been saying it is these breakouts are probably better. These breakouts, these breakouts, these breakouts, you'll see them on the smaller time frames, basically. In this example, consolidation, break a structure, break out, break a structure right there, break out. Or you could try to go with another method, which I don't like as much, but I see people doing it. You can try to find those support levels there. Uh, it's not my cup of tea, to be honest, but people have been doing that more and more I've been seeing on YouTube. But these consolidation zones seem to be a good opportunity. They're going to work until they don't. And that's okay. Just make sure you have a stop loss to protect yourself. Even if you're buying over here or whatever, your stop loss is right there. It still didn't hit. You're still fine. You know, if there's enough traders doing what you're doing, it's most likely not going to hit unless a whale comes in here and starts bashing everybody, uh, bashing everybody around. Now, um, I think besides Bitcoin here, you know, looking at that level of resistance that going on now, Ethereum. Finally starting to make a little bit more of a move. That breakout was nice to see. It's chugging. We're heading back up probably towards 2600 for Ethereum. Ethereum probably isn't going to hit the new cycle high uh, as fast as Bitcoin, but I don't think that matters right now just because Ethereum was kind of flat for quite a bit of time. We just need this to continue going up, and I think we'll, we'll all be very happy with that. Things like ADA, it's above the 50-day moving average. I'm waiting for a surge above this to hit around 58 cents. Not the craziest move, but a profitable move nonetheless. Dogecoin, finally starting to grind at a level of resistance. I'm really hopeful Dogecoin can have a 5 to 7% day as it tries to move up here towards 8.5 cents, uh, a little over 8.5 cents, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Um, a few other things here. If you guys want to find stuff that maybe um, has a higher chance of going boom over the next few days, you know, watch those moving averages. But primarily, you zoom out on some of your th charts and see what's been kind of falling down quite a bit. Some tokens fell down quite a bit over the last few weeks, while others like Ethereum, they really didn't fall down too much. Look for those tokens that had a little bit of a rougher time. They should have a pretty good move up. Mostly shorter term swing trades here. If you're going to do swing trades, it's going to be shorter term. Primarily when it comes to APE and things like this, you see it's trying to break above the 20 week moving average here, and it's already kind of doing it. If you can find an opportunity to open up a. Um, two to three hour trade maybe even more time than that you'll look for opportunities where you're having change of character breakouts like this and you kind of just ride along for the ride bitcoin's positive so don't try to go short on anything right now but these change of characters break of structures they seem to be doing a good enough job for you to buy and hold on for just a few hours for this example you see there was level of resistance right there you see where it kind of at that level of resistance but from the change of character, it took about four hours and 15 minutes or uh, four hours, basically. Not 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 bad, right? That's kind of what you're looking for right now. If you want a day trade, if you want a day trade. Not everybody's going to be in uh, favor of day trading right now, though. That's for sure. And hey, Heather, happy to see you back. Let me know if you have any questions. And hey, Shannon, as well. I'm curious, where did the name Loki come from? Is it short for something? No, I just, I've always liked North, Norse mythology. And basically... You know, uh, when I first got him, I was like, Loki seems like a decent name. And then he confirmed it by just chewing up everything and being extremely mischievous. So I was like, okay, Loki it is. Oh, hey boy. Um, but yeah, just Loki. Uh, when he gets a brother, his brother's name may be Seagor or something like that. I don't think I want a dog named Thor, honestly. But any of those other names, I think I might keep it in the Norse family. Um, right now, he's, he's chilling. I know you guys can't really see him, but well, maybe up, Loki. When I say up, he doesn't just come up. Where's Loki? Yeah, there he goes. There he goes. Um, you're such a good boy. Yes, you are. Um, but yeah, just a mischievous little guy. Or he was mischievous. Now he's pretty well trained, but he's very needy now. So he'll like nuzzle up and be like, poke, poke, poke with his nose and try to get stuff. Like right now, he's trying to nuzzle me so I can play with this thing, which is like a little teething stick. And like, uh -uh. he's basically, uh, <gasps> see, he's, tr he's trying to be feisty. Because normally I just let him grab it, but he knows he's not supposed to. 
Um, let's start here. How's Solana looking? So far, uh, pretty much the same as yesterday. I was kind of surprised didn't have such a great move today. It's like a few other tokens, I would say. Kind of like the generic feeling I have for a lot of tokens right now. Where is Solana? There we go. Four hour. Oh, because it just started popping off over the last few hours. Okay, okay. I told you guys I was off and doing stuff and today in Seattle and stuff, so... I've been away from the charts, even though it looks like it was a very exciting day. Well, now it's starting to break off, which is very, very nice. So go over here to the daily chart, change the character just confirmed a few hours ago. That's what we're looking for. Okay. So right now you're looking forward to continue driving up today, probably until it hits maybe 112 to 115. Um, after that, if Bitcoin breaks out, I think you may be able to get it up to 120, 130. That's going to be a heavy move. But at this point, it doesn't really have too many levels of resistance because all those resistance levels were all kind of below this point here here now here we've broken out above those ones now it's kind of like enjoy the gravy train enjoy the ride it's kind of hard to want to buy since the breakouts already happened the breakout kind of happened right here it looks like if i zoom out i can show you oh yeah right here right here breakout now it's kind of already on the move and if you do see me want to buy into this you're most likely going to wait for a little bit more of a jesus excuse me you're going to be waiting a little bit more for a pullback here but right now Making its way up to the order block, trying to hit 115, about 115 at the lower end, 113 it looks like. A great opportunity to try to latch onto the ride, hope for the best. And Solana, and since Solana does have some nice moves here, it could possibly easily break out above this order block and then try to get back up here towards the highs of 126. Typically, if I'm going to be buying some or having some that I don't scale out in anticipation or something like that, what I'll do is I'll actually bring it down about 2% lower. So I find that level of resistance, minus 2%, and it's around like 123, 25 or so. I'd probably just round it down at 123. And then that could be a last scale out point if you wanted to do that, or it could just be one of the last scale out points if you think it can go higher, which it definitely can. But typically for me, um, I'm, I'm basically waiting to see for Bitcoin and a lot of other altcoins here. Are we looking at a higher or a lower high? Or are we looking for it at a higher high? It's going to be weird no matter which way it goes just because the way the volatility was when the spot bitcoin etf was coming out however when it comes to solana we could easily have a green week this week and then next week everything continues to go higher and higher and higher again tomorrow is the end of the week sunday is a brand new week we can really just start going strong here which is kind of a surprise but it doesn't matter we're looking very very good right now other thing before i keep on going on id token <laughs> look at that weekly chart um, it is hitting that level of resistance that we talked about. I, I'm excited to see what happens, but like this thing is grinding and grinding and grinding. Um, so far the consolidations have been taking a little bit longer. However, uh, if you just kind of buy during these sideways moves, it seems to be paying off so far. If you go down to the previous, um, support level down here, that's usually where your stop loss is going to be. It's kind of a hard trade right now because it is so volatile. Um, so you're looking at making a lot of money, but also risking a lot of money in order to make these trades. So uh, be careful with how much leverage you want to enter into your positions. And a boopity boopity boo, 15 minute Bitcoin. We're going to be watching this closely because I'm hoping Bitcoin can actually hit this level of resistance up here. And hey, Unknown Gaming, can you, can you do some tips for starters? Usually, um, I would just say this if you're new to trading. There's a few books on it. There's lots of YouTube videos. Don't actually put money into the market until you're, uh, you know how. If you are going to put money in there for whatever reason, like you just you just really want to you have an itch to get started, plop it into Bitcoin, plop it into Ethereum, plop it into something, but don't trade it. Just let it s stay there and fester. Let it just sit there and you know don't do anything with it. Let it grow. Let it let it sprout and grow. Um, whatever that song is from the Lorax movie, let it grow, let it grow. Just let it grow. Um, Typically, reading books and YouTube videos are going to be the best thing for you as far as understanding the, the basic concepts of trading, the exchange, bid versus ask, all those really entry-level things, even candlestick patterns and stuff like that. Now, when you're learning how to trade and doing technical analysis and stuff like that, you may feel incentivized to actually start practicing with real money first. Do not just stick with the fake money that the exchange will give you. Every exchange has paper money. One of the sponsors here, both the sponsors here actually, they will both have these demo trading modes like this. Like, I would recommend you sign up for BYD5. They sponsor the channel, just a heads up. Um, don't put any money in there. You don't have to. But practice while they're demo trading. And so you go over here. Right? 
Trade with $50,000 in demo assets. Welcome to Experience Demo Trading. Do not pretend like you really have $50,000 because chances are you don't. Pretend like you have $1,000. Pretend like you have $500, $100, whatever it is, and then practice and practice and practice until um, you feel like you are making a consistent profit in your trading. Once you feel like you have a consistent profit, or even before then, make a trading journal so you guys can keep track of all your profitable trades, your winning trades, your losing trades, stuff like that. So you can see what's going on and what type of situations are making you a lot of money. Typically, if you're a new investor, the easiest way to trade a chart is the smart money concepts, um, uh, smart money concepts, change of character, brick of structure method, where you're basically waiting for momentum to shift from a bottom to start going back up. You kind of latch on to that moment where you start going up again and not, it's not the very bottom, but it's the moment where the momentum is like curling back up in a U and you get the bottom of that U or the, the little bit after the arc of the U and you're moving up. That's where you want to buy. And then you want to sell pretty much at some levels of resistance as the U goes up, you're gonna hit resistance levels that you can probably see from coming back down. That That's basically what you're looking for. And I know that sounds kind of weird, but you'll understand it down the road. Um, trading usually goes in use, especially when it comes to the stock market. If you're looking to get into the stock market as well, a lot more activity in the morning, a lot more activity in the end of the day, medium um, uh, patterns are kind of working them way out during the middle of the day. So. There's a little bit for you. It's going to take a while. Don't rush into it. If you rush into it, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Money is important. I grew up poor. I don't like being poor. Don't be poor. You know, you work hard. Like everybody works very hard for the money. Don't waste it trading until you know what you're doing. Uh, and if you do want to put your money in the market, again, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, whatever, something solid, something there. Uh, and even then, there's only so many, I would say, you know, just plop your money in there. It's it's really like a few different assets at this point um, because there is a lot of volatility. But again, you just want to make sure that you can put it there. If it goes down 5%, you're not going to freak out. If it goes, if Bitcoin goes down 30%, you should not freak out, um, especially especially during this uh, <laughs> cycle for sure. Uh, and hey, Vicky, good morning, good morning. Uh, hey, Kayla, uh, one or the other, I can probably look at uh, TRB for you. Oh, this must be a crypto finance daily chart. So it already broke out a few days ago. It looks like it's doing fine. It's towards the end of a little mini cycle here as it looks to try to get rejected off of some resistance levels around 124. So there is a little bit of an upside to this one at this point. I would probably say typically when I see charts like this, I see something like this happening. Oh, where's my horizontal? something like this so you have a couple opportunities you're either gonna if you have a position right now you're probably gonna scale it a little bit right here and then wait or if you don't have any yet you're probably not gonna try to buy right now unless it's a shorter term pattern which we'll talk about here in a second let it consolidate which it usually will do and then it'll break out that kind of makes sense because the 50-day moving average is still kind of far away it should have a pretty nice robust move if you are looking to buy right now in anticipation of uh, breaking out of this level of resistance what you're going to do, I'm just going to put those two right there so we kind of have our, our fake order block. 15 minute chart. That just looks literally crashed everybody out. Now it's rising back up. Uh, yeah, there's not really a good opportunity to buy. You might have wanted to buy right here a few, uh, about an hour ago now, maybe. But at, at this point, it's still grinding. So it might be kind of hard to find a new position. But if you already have one, you're in, you're in a good spot. You could probably move your stop loss up to 117 or so, a couple bucks less, a few bucks less than where we are right now. But it's on the move. It's on the march. It's going to be heading up to these resistance levels here. So just be aware around 123 to 127, it's just going to experience some, um, it could experience something like this where it goes up quite a bit and it just crashes back down. That swing was about a 6% swing. Not the end of the world, but you know, if you're with leverage, it can, it can be the end of the world. Yeah, it's doing fine. Now's a good time to buy 100k doge. You made 80k from it last time. It looks like it's prime to pop. If you are looking to put that all that money in Dogecoin, yeah, like it, it's never going to be a wrong time to buy into Dogecoin, especially since Dogecoin has um, been going more sideways over the past few months, so hasn't been doing a lot of crazy stuff. There's going to be an opportunity there. Don't be surprised if Bitcoin has to consolidate a little bit more before the halving and stuff like that. But if you're looking just for a cycle low, cycle high type of thing where you try to buy low, sell high, um, you know. Dogecoin is probably going to do very well. You know, 
just make sure if you haven't diversified, find a way to diversify. I always feel nervous about putting all my eggs in one basket, but it sounds like, you know, you may just be putting a, some uh, eggs in one basket. You got more baskets around. So just make sure you're safe with it. But yeah, Dogecoin is, is, is okay right now. Let me go over here. All right. Still consolidating, trying to bounce off of the 50 and 20 week moving averages, uh, primarily the 20 week moving average here. We are still in a gigantic order block, which really annoys me. But basically, we're just looking to get higher and higher and higher as the next few months go on. The halving, ha halving happens. You should see us go back up more and more past 10 cents, 11 cents, 15 cents and so forth. Um, really, once this thing starts chugging, though, it, it's going to be hard to try to catch on to it unless you are willing to buy on a like buy a falling knife with very little leverage which is what a lot of people had to do last cycle because leverage was just too crazy for this sucker because you know it was going down 20 percent up 20 percent if you had any leverage you, you're just being liquidated left and right uh unfortunately but this time you know it's going to be the same thing you got to be very careful about how you proceed with leverage but if you're just looking for you know fiat i mean not fiat um just you know just the tokens no um spot or something like that and not going with leverage, it's it's, it's going to be fine. Let's see, do I do any market forecasting dates ranges? Not really. Normally, what I'm looking for is just the medium term stuff, and once that medium stuff hits, I get uh, I start doing some of those longer term trades. This cycle right now though is really pissing me off because every time we have this drop, we should be going down more. You're seeing a a, a rush of buyers, and I think everybody's so excited about the bull market starting. Any dip is a good enough price to buy, you know, damn the technicals. Um, if you're looking for some longer term stuff, I, I think that plan B usually has some good stuff. He he can be wrong. I would say he's probably right about 60 to 70% of the time. But honestly, when it comes to forecasting, it's so hard that I actually think that's a pretty good amount of time to be right. Um, so plan B is pretty good. And then... Um, Benjamin Cohen can be okay. He's very repetitive and he doesn't really give you a clear forecast. He doesn't like to be wrong, which I completely understand. It, it sucks being wrong. Trust me, I was wrong a few weeks ago. Or no, like just last week. Um, but uh, if you're looking to kind of understand historical patterns and stuff, he's a really good guy, uh, I would say. Uh, but yeah, those, those are a few people for you right there. And hey, Satoshi, happy to see you back. ING dropped that 10% this morning. It looked like capitulation and grabbed more. There we go. Okay, we were talking about how it needed to fall down just a tad bit more, and it looks like it finally did. Uh, I was not able to buy any, though, because I was I was uh, up in Seattle today. I should have uh, should have been paying attention to that, but that's okay. Uh, maybe it'll still be a little bit lower on Monday, perhaps. I'll, I'll wait and see. But I, need to, I, need, I do need to hop on that trade right there. And hey, Haram, good day, my man. It's been a very good day for crypto. Right now, we're basically, I know it looks like right out of reach, but that's the level of resistance. That's the high we experienced a couple weeks ago. That's what Bitcoin is trying to break out of right now. And so far, we're in a consolidation mode where we're just trying to keep the higher highs, or excuse me, the higher lows. And then from there, have a larger breakout. Who knows what's going to happen? But usually when Bitcoin's going in sideways like this, we have an opportunity for altcoins to be rising. And I would say right now we have a few altcoins making their moves. Bonk is one of them. I own some Bonk. It's finally profitable. Thank the Lord. Um, AVAX is making a move right now. Comp is trying to make a move, but it's not really a great one. Solana also making a move. We just talked about that one. Uh, GTC. Oh, the GTC is actually trying to do a move here. And the other one we were talking about as far as like a larger market cap, easy to swing in day trade because it has more liquidity. I think that was Matic. Yeah, Matic is grinding, but it's really not doing anything crazy. It's This is an hour chart. It recently just started to move. We broke out of another high right here, and we're trying to chug, but it's not the most... Uh, <laughs> It's not the most rapid rise here, so it's kind of a uh, of a long grind. But what I can do is go over here to Coin Market Cap, and I can go over here and I can just look at the top 100 coins. Yep, one zero zero, and from there I can look at the last 24 hours. Up, oh, bonks at the top. Pendle, I own some Pendle. Thank God, I've been loving Pendle so far. Uh, I need to buy more of it, but uh. I mean the market cap, but yeah, it's 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 still below a billion. I can I can deal with that. Um, Sweeze up a little bit more. Oh, I need to add that to the list because that thing has been popping up quite a bit. Immutable X. These are some of the things that we've been talking about a few a few days ago. As far as the stuff that came up a lot, then crashed down a lot. Again, now they're having those larger moves, and that's what I'm looking for right now. AXL. That one's up a little bit. Helium's up a little bit more. Yeah, look at last 90 days. Helium's up 279 percent. Yowza. 
Um, and if, you know, even if it's at a billion dollars, don't be afraid to toss a little bit of money in there and see how much higher it can go. There's a reason people are buying into this stuff. So, you know, even if you feel like you missed out on the $500 million market cap or the $40 million market cap, whatever, you know, a rally is a rally and you can find a way to make money off of it. Anything else right now? Luna C seems to be doing okay. SEI is fine. Uh, you, you know, even Solana is up a little bit here, but overall things are doing okay. Near protocol seems to be doing fine. Near protocol has been getting uh, pumped up by influencers left and right. Uh, one of the things I just saw here a few seconds ago was Injective 2. This is something I bought a few of them. Uh, it's a $3 billion market cap, but this could be something. It's only at 5%, but INJ, let me add this on here. And how's this looking? Daily chart. Ah, it already broke out above the 20-day moving average. It looks like it's trying to break above the 50 here pretty soon, so you could see a surge. Um, honestly, though, as I look at this, this is going to be something more of a breakout opportunity. So if you're looking at stuff like this, you're looking for a breakout above the 50, a nice surge. By maybe Monday or Tuesday, you're expecting this to hit, go from $35 to $41 or so, which pretty good spot if you ask me. Um, good profit, good opportunity here. Again, one of those tokens, if I go over here to the weekly chart, historically, it has a good move. It's on a higher high type of move. If I zoom in a little bit more on this zoomed out chart, consolidation, breakout, looking for something larger. I'm hoping it works out because um, so far, Again, this is the four hour chart. We've had a decent amount of consolidation. We've had some dips. Looks like it's an opportunity. And I know it already happened, but it was almost a shoulder head and a shoulder. Um, we didn't really have the shoulder effect there. Maybe you can say that's a shoulder. I wouldn't say that, but you, you can see these patterns working out a little bit more. Maybe a shoulder, a shoulder and a head, perhaps. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't look the best. But right now, you're looking at an opportunity here for uh, Injective to actually have a really strong move. I don't know if I can find this out here. So this is demo account. I, let me let me see if I can actually practice with a demo account here. Uh, I don't. I like to do value here. I don't like to do it by Bitcoin. Uh, I'm just gonna see if I can actually trade this. Oh, there's only a few things you can trade, like XRP and stuff like that. Damn. Okay, we'll go over to the regular live trading. All right, now. INJ. Yeah, there we go. Okay. No, I need to put more money in this account, but basically we got like a few hundred bucks to, to waste. Um, injective 10x leverage. Let's go with five. Let's not be crazy since I don't have as much money in here. Uh, and then let's go with the hundred dollar in. So that's like 30% of my account. So a little bit, a little bit under, uh, let's go over here long and we have one. So usually when we're doing this right now, because I haven't funded this account properly, we're pretty much looking at percentages. So far, the percentages have just been okay. Um, we kind of have some that are up, some that are down. We got one that's up 2% because it's a 2x leverage. We got one that's up 4% with a 2x leverage. We got one that's up 6% with a 2x leverage. Then we got one that's down 24% on a 10x leverage. So it's down pretty much 2.5%, a little bit less. And then we got one that's up 50% on a 10x leverage, which means it's up around 5%. So we're kind of watching to see what happens. I'm kind of keeping track of some of these leverage plays. And then, of course, our longer term uh, opportunities here. Oh, Pendle's trying to go higher. Jeez, I, I want to load up more. I'll hold myself back. Um, and, but I also got this other account over here, which we're kind of using for uh, longer term trading. So it's not as day-to-day um, -day type of stuff, but things are working out okay, I would say at this point. Okay, back over here on the 15. Bitcoin's consolidating, trying to make some nicer moves. We'll see how that pans out. Um, one of the things I did do here, if I can move this over very fast, I just got to double check something. Oh yeah, we're still good to go. Okay. Uh, probably shouldn't delete that, but that's fine. There we go. Hey, Akil, I'll like uh, explain and break down analysis. I, I love from Nigeria. Yeah, no worries, guys. I feel like somebody has to do it. I see there's some people that do it. Um, but usually, I think my flaw is I've been kind of tired lately, and I'm really tired right now. But I'm giving it that extra effort I was talking to you guys about the other day. And I know I can talk fast. I know I can talk. Well, not fast. Um, I am talking fast, but... I know I can talk with more energy, but I just never actually have a reason because I feel like I'm just teaching or something. But now I'm just like, vibes are up. 
I can pull out a small cigar. I don't got, well, I got tons of large ones, I guess. I haven't got quite a few Cubans now. Um, however, some of these smaller cigars, uh, I'm kind of smoking them because I'm afraid I'm going to crush them with all the other stuff I have in my humidor. But they've been interesting. They've been nice light smokes and they haven't been too heavy. And typically when I smoke, it's like an hour plus affair for a cigar because you don't want to burn it by smoking too fast. These ones right here, they're light. They're very easy to uh, you know, light up basically. And they last for maybe about a half an hour or something like that at the longest, at the longest. But since I'm having a conversation with you guys, it should probably last a half an hour, which means after this, we can hit up the Lancera, which I really do love. It's the 20th anniversary edition of one of my other brands I enjoy. So... Little cutter -roo. There you go. Ooh, smells good. A little bit of a light. Not too toasty. A light draw. Ooh, that's flavorful. Okay. All right, and then off we are. Off we go. I think I am talking too fast tonight. AVAX moving finally. I, I know we've been talking about it and it, it's, it's like a lot of these tokens right now. They're all up against these levels of resistance, but just because Bitcoin's popping off, it doesn't mean necessarily they're breaking out as well. Um, let's go over here to AVAX very fast because we've been talking about AVAX and AXS and we've been waiting for both of them. It's nice to see AVAX finally making a move. Daily chart, look at that. Making the breakout, doing fine, change of character, heading up here towards that level of resistance. Kind of aiming for, I would say, even $42, even though I know 41 is a little bit closer, but, you know, ever since we had the first breakout, it seems to be doing just fine. It's kind of hard to latch on to these, because typically these are going to be shorter-term time frames or shorter-term buys. Um, the reason that you're probably only swinging this right now is because Bitcoin found a way to continue moving higher and higher. Go over here to the four-hour chart. Simple breakout. It's okay. Um... You know, you had all the green signs saying bye, bye, bye at the exact moment of the breakout. It took a little bit of time. This is a four hour chart. It, it took a time, some time before we actually managed to move up. But so far, things are looking good. We're at that next level of resistance and we're going to see if we can continue breaking out. Just know you are entering that next level of resistance right now in that breakout. Um, although it took a little bit of time to really galvanize, it's, it's doing pretty darn well at this point. Solana is also having that nice move. Anything else as far as last few seconds? No. Nah injective you know but we talked about that one that's something i'm looking forward to seeing if we can break out above it or not um i really hope we can break out because it's it's primed and ready to go yeah we are and i hear let me know yeah let me know if you have any questions of course feel free to go to the beginning it's a pretty it's not a long one today it's not a long one i just kind of hopped right into everything if you use book maps i think it's called can you explain it a little uh, I do not use Bookmap. I'm not entirely sure what Bookmaps is. Um, let me see if I can find out. Uh oh. It's good, but I don't know if it's, if I didn't light it all the way. Is this something on Bookmaps? Images. Maybe order block? No, I don't use, I'm looking at a bunch of pictures right now online and I don't use charts like any, any of this stuff right now. Anything I'm looking over here, not. I thought it might be like the order block where you're looking at blocks and volume and stuff. And I don't do that with crypto. Um, I've done it with options a little bit or stocks, I would say. But uh, no, I've never used anything like this before. I'll try to see if I can learn more about it or I can try to find a tutorial for you guys to check out, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, because I don't bubbles and stuff. It's it's not my not my not my thing here. Uh looks like there's different types of charts though, so it's probably not that, but maybe those blocks over there, you know, if you are using those blocks, it's just pretty much looking at different levels of support and resistance. You can kind of get the vibe of which one has the longer bar, how strong that support, how strong that resistance is. But typically if the price wants to break above it, you'll see the you'll see it gnawing at it, and then all of a sudden it'll pop out. If you see it gnawing and gnawing, usually you want to buy during that gnawing process because all of a sudden it's going to pop, and then it's going to be too late to buy. That might not be what we're talking about, but uh, that's probably the only thing I notice uh, off of those charts right there. 
And it's, I guess I'll roll uh, roll one to put in the air with you. Hey, I appreciate it. It's feel free to smoke. I'm not drinking because I got good old powerful uh, Gatorade here. I haven't even had dinner yet today. What have I did? I haven't eaten today. Shit, I've been so busy going up to Seattle and stuff. Oh, I had a uh, skinny popcorn. Only 100 calories since I'm dieting. Um, I've had 100 calories today. And, and a coffee. And a coffee from Starbucks. That, that'll that do it right there. Uh, I should really eat food, though. But that's going to happen later on. I did not like this well, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot better. All right. Now I just put it right back down as I talk to you guys. But yeah, um, my this day has been so long and wild, so I just need to decompress with you guys, maybe. I don't know. Uh, what do you call it? You know, smoke a cigar, relax. It's a Friday. doesn't feel like a Friday, but it's a Friday. Hey, gamer. Hi, sir. You are uh, Indian? Yeah, no worries. Guys. Dude, I have people that watch me all over words. You know, I, everybody's the same to me. There are a few of them on YouTube, basically order block heat map types of things. Yeah, um, what do you call, you'll see a few tutorials on them. I mostly have used the, the order blocks on uh, TD Ameritrade, so I've actually never used them on, on a trading view. I'm sure there's a way to get them. Usually, I don't know if it's on here, where is it? Um, data window. Is it right here? No. Object tree. It's in here somewhere if you do the trading mode. I know it is. Quick search. Streams, ideas, streams, chats. It's somewhere on the right hand side, but I'll, I'll try to figure it out and make a short tutorial for you. But better yet, just find it from another channel that actually like does it more in depth. Is that no streams, ideas, streams, chats, ideas? I'm pretty sure it's on the right hand side somewhere, but I just don't recall exactly where it's at because normally it just pops up right here. I won't worry about it, but yeah, if you, if you if you find out more about it, you have a specific question, let me know. I can try to help out as best I can. Coin glass heat map is pretty cool and easy to read. Oh, there you go. So there's one right there for you. What do you think about GRT beat Bitcoin? It seems like there's support around the 350 Satoshi level for a long time. Looks like a big brother, small brother. Uh, GRT. Well, GRT to Bitcoin, that's probably not going to be the best thing, but we can go over it. Over it. No matter, you know, GRT to, what do you call them? GRT. I mean, it's been there for a while, and I think this kind of emulates a lot of what you're seeing with a lot of other crypto tokens right now. They're kind of at these weird levels uh, because Bitcoin is breaking out, but not everything else is because the dominance is kind of building. And, you know, against Bitcoin, of course, you're going to see that the prices go down. But you are looking at the support. It's been around for quite a bit of time since November. So if you are looking to hop into this trade, you know, looking from Bitcoin against um, GRT, it actually looks to be a pretty good spot. If I go over here to GRT to Tether, this is the weekly chart, granted. It is trying to bounce off of where it hasn't bounced off technically, but it's pretty close to the 20 week moving average. It's trying to have a surge after that. Still in that level of resistance here, which you're really banking on. Oh, there it is. Yep. Change of character happened a couple days ago. That was the proper time to buy off of this breakout. Higher lows. You kind of see this pattern happening a lot right now because we're seeing a lot of reversals. Breakout yesterday, also trying to break out about 50 day moving average. It's looked like it's primed to go up at least to maybe 18 cents, uh, 18 and a half if you're lucky. Um, sometimes it can go all the way into the order block and things like that, but those would be the final scale outs. I would say not the first scale outs if it were me, but yeah, it's in a good spot. Uh, Bitcoin should stagnate here maybe eventually, uh, and that stagnation will give opportunities like for GRT and a lot of other things to actually have their larger moves. Some things are moving right now, but it's definitely not a lot. Again, Bitcoin over the last few days has been moving up quite a bit, but you know, even right now, Maybe Bonk is up 7% or something like that. But, you know, Comp is only up 1. Crow's only up 1. Dot's only up 0.83. Uh, you know, Dot over the last few days. See, it's not making those necessary, those larger surges to make up for all the stuff it lost. But it is getting up close to this level of resistance. So you should see a, a pop here pretty soon. And I'm hoping those pops really are where a lot of us can make our money. 
if you're not day trading Bitcoin. At this point, day trading Bitcoin is um gonna hop on during these desolate moments where everybody's freaking out again. And sometimes they last for a while, sometimes they don't. Right now, we've had one that's been losing, uh, lasting for a while, and really, it's last. It's uh, the consolidation's lasting this long because we have to break out above a very large level of resistance. And of course, we're gonna have to wait a little bit of time before that move happens. But again, that's not a terrible thing. It's just kind of being patient. Patient, excuse me. All right, you're seeing this little bit of move right here. We don't really have another level of resistance besides this level right there, that kind of imaginary line. I'm gonna try to consolidate, gonna try to break out over the next hour or so. It's like 44 minutes, yeah. Next 44 minutes, we're gonna try to have a surge up here pretty soon that brings us back above, you know, 47,800 or something like that, 47,800. From there, we'll probably consolidate a little bit later. And then in the middle of the night, when nobody's awake, we're all sleeping, it's gonna boom. And then tomorrow morning, we wake up and like Bitcoin's booming. Um, and that's the bullish case right there. Now, maybe we consolidate a little bit more. Bitcoin's down 500 bucks tomorrow, but even then, people are just gonna buy it up because, again, it is a. Uh, it, it's just like bull market mentality that every dip has to be bought back up and if you don't you're going to lose all the all your money right so let me get rid of that very fast but again we are so close to that resistance we're basically just waiting for the surge and we are having higher lows right here in anticipation for a larger move sometime sometime over the next few um some, next few hours really for that larger move that could potentially move us up and no worries ty and hey, Discount Killer, happy to see you, and thanks for being a member as always. Um, dude, this thing is not staying lit. I wonder if I didn't keep it in a dry enough part of my humidor, uh, or it's just one of those small cigars. Um, things were okay. It was a pretty busy, hectic day for me, but I wouldn't say it was necessarily a terrible day. Um, got a friend going through some stuff, and, you know, always got to show support for friends. Um, but besides that, Okay day, okay day. Uh, just got here. We're gonna stay up all weekend. <laughs> um, I will not be streaming on Sunday because of the Super Bowl, and I'll just be out of the house basically for a while. Um, I'm gonna be gone from like two o'clock to maybe till the end of the Super Bowl. Maybe I don't know exactly when that is. Um, anyway, I will be streaming for a large part of the day tomorrow, though. Um, uh, maybe a lot of the afternoon. Uh, people don't watch me in the morning hours. It's just not something people do. Uh, it, it's for a lot of other YouTubers. It's not just me. People don't like, you know, people have jobs normally. Um, sad day, people still have jobs, but not as many people have jobs. So uh, I'm going to be still doing more in the afternoon. Maybe I'll start around 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock and kind of um, stream for that bit of time. Tonight, we're going to be going for a while, just kind of watch everything. Uh, and then maybe, you know... We've been streaming for, what, half an hour, 40 minutes so far, 50 minutes so far. You know, uh, about tw 40 minutes, it goes to the next hour, which is 9 o'clock. I'll probably want to do another 40 minutes plus another hour, like another hour and 40 minutes. I could probably do longer. Remember, guys, when it comes to me and how I stream, it's basically the vibe I get from the chat. So if nobody's talking on the chat, this stream may end in 20 minutes. It all depends on what the feedback I'm getting. Uh, and that's why today I'm more active, more whatever. So I can get the chat going and the chat's going good to go. I can vibe with the chat. I don't like talking to an empty camera. It's very awkward, very weird. I'm not a professor. I'm just some dude that likes to trade and makes a good profit off of it. Um, you know, and I'm working on myself to be a better talker, communicator, whatever, but uh, really it sucks. <laughs> Ooh. Hey Delilah. Um, What's right here? How does the super chart look? Whenever I hear super chart, I always think of like, what are you talking about? But then I know there's actually a token called super. Oh, wow. So this is a, this is definitely a scale out mode right here. I mean, you're looking at this long <laughs> level of resistance here. That's been here all the way since December 4th. Um, talk about a consistent resistance level. Now, um, that's the big thing before we go in diving deeper into that it's at a crucial resistance level you don't have to sell but just understand it's been up here quite a few times before even when bitcoin was making these larger moves and stuff it still hasn't really found a way to be able to break out and do something incredibly crazy okay so it, it's trying though you know it's trying like it did the last few times what i would say here is 
even though it's at this level of resistance, if you want to scale out a little bit, you can just make sure your stop loss is, you know, decently placed even right now with this surge i would say it's still okay to have your stop loss down here around 62 cents me being me i would have it moved up here towards 65 but even that's like 10 not 8 cents kind of away from where we are if you could well see i was hoping to see something more of a consolidation but all it did was just fall down and then cr go back up i'm concerned in the short term here you're looking at maybe something more of a double top and that would make sense because we are at these higher levels up here uh, typically these last few, uh, you can just show the, you can just see the weakness here as it's, it failed to make higher highs. Um, this one worked a little bit, but uh, this was a little bit more of a double top two, top, top, broke down, retested, came down. All that retest was pretty strong and it had to get smacked back down. So there's definitely buyers in here, but, uh, I would just keep an eye out for that double top here on the 15 minute chart. If I can drag it out. There we go. Um, preferably. You know, what you want to see is it's okay if it actually falls down from here. That's not the crazy part. If it decides to tap back down here or even break, you really just don't want to see it breaking down below this level of support around like 69 cents, basically. If that's the case, you're going to see a lot of people buying back in, and then you'll see something more of a consolidation where we break out. And again, this is a tough nut to crack because we've tried to break out above this a few times before. I would still say it's possible because Bitcoin's on the verge of breaking out itself. Hopefully that could help it out a little bit more. The oscillators are all in your favor. Even the weekly ones over here, they still seem to be doing fine. And when you go over here to Bitcoin and you see, I'm going to do that. You know, Bitcoin's also been stagnating a little bit since this um, December 4th. You know, technically if Bitcoin is able to make a larger move, pretty much super should be as well. So it, it looks fine, looks good. Careful with the resistance level. That's the only thing. Just careful with the resistance level because again, Bitcoin's at resistance. Bitcoin could obviously just have, hey, we're at resistance. Bitcoin doesn't feel like breaking out. Let's consolidate for another two days before breaking out. Bitcoin could always do something like that. But uh, honestly, uh, that's why you want to have that stop loss with a little bit of extra give. That's what I typically like. Um, but yeah, it, it's looking pretty well, but it is at a major level of resistance. So it's kind of hard for me to say buy unless you've already bought into it, in which case you're looking for your first scale out and then another scale out if you're able to break out. Uh, you know, so it's a little bit, a little bit difficult there, but if you're already in it, it's good. Took a, a 30 X long out of sole liquidation of 107 11. That's not a bad liquidation point right here. Jeez. Uh, talking too much and I'm burping. Oh, let me. All right. That has a good flavor to it. So Lana. One hour chart, okay. So basically it's right here. Yeah, it's right around this low right here. You're in a perfectly good spot. So far it's consolidating and making some higher moves. Just make sure you have a respectful, um, you know, price target here. You're not aiming for the necessarily the moon because oh, it's a daily chart. There you go. You're aiming for that last little bit of profit as it tries to go from 109 now, getting up close up to 113, 114, uh, even up to 115. Loki, Loki. Oh, there you go. He was like really whimpering all of a sudden. I think he was having a bad dream, so had to wake him up. Um, but yeah, so you're waiting for that last little bit of profit right here, which is going to be the, you know, the cherry on the top. So it's not a bad thing, especially because if I go over here, uh, well, no, I went over here for a specific reason to draw this line right there. Okay. That's the midpoint of the resistance level right now. That's pretty much what you're looking for. But if your stop loss is right around here, like 106, 107, whatever you said, 107, 11, should be good to go. Um, just make sure if the trade is, make sure the trade is isolated if it has a liquidation price. That way your entire portfolio is not going to liquidate it, of course. But uh, it's an opportunity. Um, hopefully you're still up a little bit based off of this last breakout that we saw on the 15-minute chart. It seems to be doing okay. Looks to be consolidating. But again, Bitcoin is also consolidating right now. So nothing crazy happening. But again, it's looking to make that last push up there. This thing keeps dying every time I stop. I don't know if I want to keep smoking this because it has a great flavor, but it's just not, it's not staying lit. You know what? It's such a small cigar that it's probably needs me to keep on puffing it. I think that's what it is. I don't smoke small cigars all too often, but they're very tasty. Uh, am I safe to leave the trade open through the night? 
I mean, if you have the liquidation price or the stop loss, you're going to be fine either way. But typically, when it's trade like that, as long as I have a stop loss, I'm okay because I know how much I'm going to lose. I know how much I'm going to make. Or if I wake up and none of the things have happened, I know that I'm still in the in the in the in play basically. But typically, I will have a stop loss if I am going to go to sleep on a trade. It can be a liquidation type of event, um, especially if it's a 30x leverage type of play. So you you don't have to really do much. The only thing I would say is if you have a high leverage like 30x, and on top of that, you have um, and the trade is not isolated and it's um, what's the exact term I need to use? Cross. If it's cross. That may be a concern, but besides that, typically if it's if it's going to liquidate, it's going to liquidate. It sounds like it's an isolated position, so it doesn't seem like to be a big deal. But yeah, you know, uh, there's a chance it could fall down below 107, 106 sometime tonight. So it's you know it's a little bit of um, it's a little bit of how long Bitcoin really wants to consolidate and how uh, how aggressive it's going to be during that consolidation process. What's it here? Chain link? Oh, uh, there is link on here. I gotta fix my back. I'm like hunched over right now. All right. Link is showing a little bit of weakness in the 15 minute chart, just like Bitcoin. Let's go over here to the daily chart. Really, this hasn't really had a good pop just yet. It's still consolidating over the last few days. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. You're consolidating, waiting for a breakout. You have lower highs, lower lows. You're basically just waiting for one of these things to change, and then you're gonna kind of um, buy in, hook, line, and sinker, and just go psh, right after it. Right now, if you're buying it, it's because Bitcoin's been doing well, not because this is necessarily gonna pop and go crazy. Um, what I'd probably like to see is us consolidate maybe a little bit longer going into tonight, maybe. Um, but basically, after that consolidation and breakout, breaking back above this high, and then from there, you're going to see all the oscillators kind of switch to on mode. And then from there, you're probably looking to buy anywhere between $18 and 1870 up to me, 1858, 1870, pretty small range in there. Ride the wave up towards $19, scale it a little bit if you want to, but really that level of resistance is going to be all the way up here, kind of around 1970 or so. Um, the issue with this one is you're probably going to need to have some type of leverage in order to make it worth it. So, you know, if I go over here and I say buy now, sell right here, it's really only 6% profit. If you're okay with a 6% profit trade, some people are, some people aren't. I think it's actually fine, but a lot of people like to use leverage. You are going to, um, the leverage is going to make it more worth it. Again, if you're not comfortable using leverage, don't do it just because I said leverage. Um, but it's only going to be around a 6% profit. And from there, again, you're looking at something happening more next week with all these different altcoins where next week you see the follow through on some of these moves that are really, really large, but you're really not going to see the follow through, I think, until next week, unfortunately, which just gives you another know, opportunity to really buy into it. Um, the daily chart can be fine. Four hour chart can be even better right here, but I prefer to see it come back down to get a better price. And then, of course, I can try to rip up later on. We're in basically this. Right. If it breaks out, also there's a green, you're good to go. But I'd probably say wait until it breaks out. Um, because Bitcoin's moving up, you don't necessarily have to, but the way I would trade is I would wait for the breakout to occur and then kind of ride the wave. Your stop loss is going to be pretty tight and then kind of wait to see what happens next. And 15 right here as we kind of watch Bitcoin and see what it does. Cheers, Sullivan. Uh, so here. Hello, Mike. Do you still see Bitcoin going down to 38K for double bottom uh, before having? Are we going to bull market here? You know what? I was wrong about the last dump. I knew it was going to. I knew we were going to dump, but I thought we were going to dump a lot more. I still can see us breaking down, but at this point, everything is turning bullish again, so it might not happen anytime soon. We might have a whole another month of going up before maybe March is really bad. It's hard for me to say. Because right now, again, we're up at that large level of resistance. I still have powder that I'm waiting for when Bitcoin drops. Because I'm sure it's going to drop. But, you know, 
how do I say this? Uh, a drop right now to thirty-eight thousand dollars is a lot is a lot easier than a drop from forty uh, to, from fifty-five thousand dollars to thirty thirty-eight thousand dollars. Does that make sense? Um, so I'm hoping that by the time we do have that eventual cool off period, it's not going to completely give me worse buying opportunities that I currently have right now, which is why I'm still dollar cost averaging a few tokens, but not a lot. Um, but yeah, I, I still think we're going to have a drop for what that means. But again, I've been expecting a few drops. The drops kind of happen, but they're not as large as I kind of want them to be. So, um, you can definitely see Bitcoin trying to have another surge going into February, especially since the stock market has still been going up higher and higher and higher. You're currently short Bitcoin with a small leverage. If it's a small leverage, you should be okay to kind of wait out the storm. I would still suggest having some type of stop loss, maybe one or two percent above the high we have right now, just in case things get out of hand. Um, typically, though, when you see a chart like this, we are typically going to have to cool down. I don't know if that cooldown is going to happen all the way to thirty-eight thousand dollars, which is just you know thirty. It's just right here. It's not like it's a crazy level or anything. Um, but right now, it looks like we might have to wait for the two hundred to grind up here, which isn't going to happen all the way until March, which is why I was talking about March a few seconds ago. Um, but you're going to feel very confident or very mad sometime next week as we try to follow through with this action, or if we eventually come back down. Um, I, I hesitate to say have the stop loss be at the top. I would always say like one to two percent higher, just because sometimes we wick up and then we get rejected on top of that. It's still going to be a few days before we figure out if we're really going to have a very clear and decisive breakout. Um, but yeah, again, right now it's not a bad idea to short at a heavy level of resistance, and this is a heavy level of resistance. You're seeing also just get ready to turn around a little bit again, not for a crash, but a little bit more of a drop. So if you wanted to scale out a little bit with some profit, you're still going to be okay. And maybe that profit can help you a little bit more if the trade does end up going up a little bit more. It can be like a little bit of a hedge, but not, you know, it, it's really up to you and how do you decide you want to play it. But yeah, I, I still expect it to come down. Yeah. And there we go. And again, this thing went out. This is the most annoying freaking cigar. The other cigar I had just a few minutes ago, it was it was small, but it never had to be relit. I don't know what's going on with this one. We'll see. We'll see how this cigar works out. Did you see the BlackRock ETF bought up 200, 200K Bitcoin the first month alone? I was looking at that. And that just kind of shows you what we were talking about when it comes to those institutions, them getting more involved. They are loading up on Bitcoin. Um, and I don't think they're necessarily allowed to sell large amounts of it unless the um, unless the volume on their exchange drastically goes down from what I understand, right? Um, so it seems, this is just a kind of a, a guess here. It seems that if that's true and they can't necessarily, uh, let me take off my ring off this finger. Holy fuck, oh, that feels better. Um, ah, oh, there we go. My ring irritated my uh, finger because I had put soap on the ring and the soap didn't get out of underneath the ring, basically. You get what I'm saying, sorry. Anyway, it seems to me that when Bitcoin eventually does start to uh, crash after the next all-time high and cycle and stuff, we go through our next crypto winter, if there's so much volume and people trading Bitcoin left and right, I, I wonder, honestly, if they're going to be able to sell their Bitcoin at a very good price or if they're going to be um, in some type of trouble. I am happy to see that they're buying Bitcoin right now because when we get to all-time highs and stuff, $100,000 plus whatever it ends up being, they're going to be able to most likely sell it for a good price. Like a, a profit, maybe not the profit they're looking for, but a profit, um, because you know it's, it's the profit of business. It's not like they're choosing to buy now, sell later type of thing. But um, I'm curious to see how all that plays out. But yes, they are loading up on a lot of Bitcoin. They're not the only one. Um, I think only one. Uh, I think only one ETF is in trouble right now, and that's the Grayscale ETF. So it, it's not really, it's not really trouble. Uh, Uh, let's see. 
This is Bazinga. Uh, can I zoom in on this? Yeah, I can for you guys. No, there we go. BlackRock Fidelity outperformed Grayscale's GPTC. Two key metrics where rivals have an edge. Frankly, they're cheaper. It's cheaper. Nobody wants to pay for uh, pay a, a, for a luxury price for something that they don't have to, you know? All right. Um, there we go. Spot Bitcoin Exchange traded funds ETF offered by BlackRock Inc. and Fidelity are outperforming Grayscale's GBTC. That's according to a JP Morgan research report cited by Coindesk on Wednesday. Grayscale's GPTC will likely struggle against competitors despite a slowdown in outflows. Grayscale, known for having the highest fees among spot Bitcoin ETF issuers, lowered its management fee from 2% to one5 with its transition to a spot Bitcoin ETF. Still, it is costlier than its counterparts. The report led by analyst Nicholas, I'm not even going to try, um, highlights two liquidity metrics where BlackRock and Fidelity ETFs have an edge over GPTC. The first metric, the Hui variable ratio, is used as a proxy for market market breadth. It shows GPT's value to be approximately four times higher than that of BlackRock and Fidelity ETFs, indicating they have significantly more market breadth. The second metric examines the average absolute deviation of ETF closing prices from the net asset value (NAV). This is something that's actually kind of important. Recent data suggests the price deviation from NAV for the Fidelity and BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETFs is nearing that of GLD, the gold ETF, signaling a notable improvement in liquidity. That means a lot of people buying, a lot of people selling. So when the price of Bitcoin goes up, people are rushing in there to buy the, the, the Bitcoin ETF. If there's not enough buyers, it, it's it, it's like any other chart. It's just harder for the, the price action to kind of meet up with it because it creates two separate markets. You don't want to have two separate markets. You want to see your price go up when Bitcoin's going up and you want it to be a comparable percentage increase. When it does that, it's great. And of course, gold is the gold standard to be uh, <laughs> comparing that to. Does it say anything else? Tesla, Dogecoin, Elon Musk. No, okay. Um, but yeah. So yeah, it, it's it uh, only Grayscale I think is having issues, and that's because of the greedy. <laughs> If this keeps up, they will have over a million in their Bitcoin ETF by year's end. I would even say more than a million because if we get into a rally, hedge funds that have the, the money for this, they're going to be forced to like start putting money in there as their clients like, hey, I want a piece of this. I want a piece of it. And even if each hedge fund only puts like 1% in there, that's going to be enough for them to have to keep on buying more and more Bitcoin. And again, they don't want to buy Bitcoin. Like, they're already pissed off about having to buy Bitcoin at 47000 Imagine what happens if they buy Bitcoin at 60000 70000 80000 Typically, when we're in a bull market and we're buying everything at like, you know, dollar cost averaging during the, the bad times, whether we bought a lot or a little bit, whatever, when we're selling it to people, you know, we're, we're usually selling our Bitcoin to um, e everyday people, whatnot. Um, and... You know, we're, we're getting a great return because somebody else is willing to buy it from us at a crazy value compared to where we bought it. Just imagine that supercharged now because the buying is going to be so intense because they're going to have to buy to stay within regulations. Because of that, it's going to be a lot easier for us to offload a lot of our cryptocurrencies. And there's not really much they can do about it because it's going to take a while for them to offload a certain amount of Bitcoin. And when they do start offloading Bitcoin, we can see it at the same time. It's going to be really, really fun to watch. Pretty crazy, to think, pretty crazy to think, but that's where we're headed. I mean, it's true. Uh, and that's another reason why we want to see more regulation. More regulation just means more money. And again, I have to stress this point. We are in at the beginning. <laughs> beginning. Oh my gosh. It's not like freaking a deer or something. Um, we are here in the beginning. Hold on a second here, guys. Uh, the more I talk, the more I'm like, oh, I have this pillow behind me. That's what it is. The, this chair pillow. Okay. Oh my gosh, see what happens when I actually sit back all the way? Feels great. It's because I have this vest and this vest rides up a lot. There we go. Oh, now my back hurts from stretching it. Spasming out, but that's okay. Please don't die on me. Please stay lit. There we go. Anything else moving right now? I'm really trying to find something that can move because right now we're it's still a kind of a mixed bag because Bitcoin's consolidating over the last few hours. 
I am patiently waiting for injective. What's this? Tether USD? Whoa, 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 whoa. What's this? What's, what's, what is the heck? Okay, I'm gonna go to notific uh, explore first. Trending. Okay, now I'm gonna go over here to USTD. Anything latest happening? No, nothing happening. What's go what's going on here? What am I missing? Tether USD Binance US. What what the heck is going on here? USD D to Tether is fine. What's going on? My people. What the fuck is going on here? Is this why Bitcoin's showing some weakness right now? I'm hoping this is just broken. Um, coin market cap can shed some light on this, possibly. Maybe I do need a cigar if this is fucking where we're going. Hmm. So yeah, USTD right there, a dollar. We're fine. Trading view. No, that's not what I'm looking for. It doesn't just have the price. Why is trading view? It's not, we're not talking about Bitcoin. USDT crypto to the euro. Is it still working out fine? No, this is at 90. Oh, this is the euro. Never mind. It's going to be a little bit different. What is going on here? Twitter should be talking about it if it's to be talked about, right? Oh, Jesus. I mean, my dumb not being able to type properly. Okay, a lot of fucking spam. That's what it is. I honestly am not entirely sure. I really don't know. I I don't understand this at all. To the U.S. During the banking crisis, no, this was back in July. Yeah, I don't know. Coinbase looks fine. Okay, that's good. TV got to be broken. <laughs> I hope so. I'm like, I mean, uh. Oh my God. Binance. I find Binance US. I don't give it. Just let me. Prices. Where's the other search bar? Jeez. No! See, it's on there. What the heck is going on? See, it's only on theirs. It's only on theirs. So the data going into trading view is not bad. What is going What is going on? Okay, it, it's staying steady right now. But why is nobody talking about this on Twitter? I don't understand. Cuz like hold on a second here. All right, here we go. You see it too? Some doing out with Binance? It could be. Is that Binance? No, no, this is Tether. This is not Binance coin, this is Tether. This is Tether to USD. Um, let me, let me look at Binance though. See, now I feel like some noir, cigar, heavy smoking asshole because I'm just like huffing and puffing. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? 
It looks like Binance's crypto treasury is bursting at the seams. Holy fuck, please don't. What the fuck is going on right now? Here, uh. One desk. Any breaking news? No breaking news. What the fuck is going on? I'm going to post this on Twitter and be like, guys, what the fuck is going on right now? Give me a second. Because I'm just as curious as you guys. I don't know what the heck is going on. Uh, in fact, I should probably do this. Sorry, guys. I want to squeeze this through so people can see it's tether, basically. Uh... Let me make this even better. Sorry, guys. This is ADHD in action. Um, it's just making a, a nice picture here, basically. All right. But honestly, what the heck is going on? This is not how I want the night to go. Not at all. So let me go over here. Uh, what cigars? Hold on a second here. USDT, yeah. There we go. Hopefully somebody can message me and figure out what's going on because I, this is so fucking weird. So, okay, from what I understand so far, like if I go over here to um, BYD5, okay, and I go over here to uh, derivatives. Actually, I don't know how to search for it on here because it's not something you just search, right? Yeah, it's not something you really search for, huh? But on Binance, it is. And we've seen one tweet about Binance so far that actually showed some concern. So. Does that mean everything on Binance is pretty much pumping against USDT right now, though? That's the question. So. Yeah, Bitcoin's pump. Well, this is daily chart. It should be pumping. Uh, this has been happening over the last hour, I would suppose. Last four hours, basically. No, it, it, this is USDC though. Where's D? Okay, there we go. No, it's the same thing though. So it, it's fine. It's fine. Bitcoin's not doing anything. Cr the fuck is going on? Except fine. Please let me stretch my screen. I need to do it. They're not letting me. That's okay. What if I go full screen? <sighs> okay, whatever. Um, Is it really going to stay in auto mode or uh, lock frame ratio? I won't let me change it. It doesn't matter. It seems that the Bitcoin price on Binance is just fine, but I really just have no idea what's going on. I hope it's bad data coming through. I don't see it, this price right here, I don't see it moving all too much, right? Um, the one minute chart, you're seeing small moves, but it's not, it's not moving a lot. So that, that could be a good thing, maybe? Uh... I don't know. Sorry for the, 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 the silence. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not freaking out. I was like, what, what is going on? Because Bitcoin is not really acting up because of it. So it must be something going on, but I, I just don't know. I'll hop back on Twitter in a little bit. Let's just hope it's nothing too crazy. I'm, I'm hoping we're fine. I, I'm just going to say right now. Prices don't seem to be doing anything wild. We seem to be okay. Um, interesting for sure. 
Um, interesting for sure. Let's just say that. Interesting for sure. I, I, I honestly do not know why Tether is decoupling the way it is. Uh, although it, it looks like it stopped, basically. USDC is fine at a little under a dollar, but not in like a, a, a weird place, right? Just kind of that normal range. I tickled the light button and it giggled. <laughs> Thanks, Kilo. Uh, on trust wallets at a dollar. Yeah, that's where it should be. Yeah, I, I'm just, it, it might be something specific to um, Binance, but you don't want Binance to have issues because when Binance has issues, you see a lot of other issues like pop up, right? Because people like love Binance. And again, all of our data really comes from Binance on trading view. So you don't want it to be bad. And of course, I stopped smoking this. I don't know. This land Sarah better not do this as much. I should have got a larger ring gauge, apparently. All right, but yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Market manipulation? I mean, any time the dollar really depicts, I think it would be, especially in this bull market. It's very weird. Um, but people don't seem to be panicking about it, right? So if people aren't, like if the price of Bitcoin is not panicking, I think we're honestly okay. Like, you know, Bitcoin's not going down. Bitcoin to USD isn't going down. I, I think we're good. And I feel like if there was something really bad breaking, us on a Friday night are not going to be breaking said story, right? I, I think there's just something wrong and we'll figure it out. Um, I'll keep Twitter over here. I'll... Uh, I'll get out of Coinbase or Binance US for a while, but uh, live wire. Okay, so if anything pops up, it'll come right here. That's no, that's 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 earlier today. New, new, new. Okay, I don't know. We'll we'll keep an eye on it. it it's kind of frozen at that level right now. It's coming back up a little bit, maybe, maybe. It should be around here, you know. It's been showing some weakness for a while, though, like last few hours. I honestly don't know what's happening. Um, I'll keep you guys updated, though. So far, Bitcoin doesn't seem to care, and if Bitcoin doesn't care, I mean, I care, but, you know, if the market's not caring, I think we're fine. Peeps are getting out of stable coins. Well, yeah, you want to be buying Bitcoin right now. You want to be buying a whole bunch of other stuff, but I hope it's not going to mess up anything. Uh, you have ADHD to appreciate your efforts. I'm also wondering what is going on. Yeah, it's not even like a panic thing. It's just like, what, what, what is it? Like, what is going on? Why is nobody talking about it? That's what freaks me out even more, right? USDT. Basically, if you wanted to send money to, uh, how would that work? I guess you'd be wanting to sell your Bitcoin for Tether right now. And then, you know, only on Binance though. That's the weird thing. Um, but yeah, it probably best just to wait it out and see, cause there's nobody talking about it. There's like this, this spam thing happening, like this bot, right? If I block him and I go back. And I refresh. Let's see. This is the nitty gritty stuff that people don't usually have to do. But there's so much, so many bots on Twitter. Uh, you don't really see as many, I would say, nowadays, since Elon kind of switched things over. But, like, it's... I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Lunar New Year on top of that. Isn't it crazy how much spam Twitter and all these social media companies have to go through every single like minute though? It, it's it's insane. Um, we'll wait, we'll wait, and we'll 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 keep an eye out for it. But so far, Bitcoin seems to be still consolidating and looking to break out and go to nice levels. But uh, I am curious to figure out why Tether is um, doing some funky shit right here. This is the four-hour chart. Oh, yeah. Very curious. But again, if it's only happening on 
finance, I think we'll be okay, maybe. The big thing is why I'm not too concerned at this point in time is this. Um, first of all, Bitcoin is not doing anything, but Bitcoin against Tether is not doing anything on Binance's own chart, which I think is actually a good sign here. Uh, if you saw Bitcoin starting to surge against the... You saw Bitcoin starting to surge against um, the USDT when every other chart says no, then I would have a little bit more of a concern. Let me see. Uh, huh. Fifteen minute chart. We're seeing Bitcoin really just like freeze and wait for another high here or another move. But uh. I even want to search for here. No, I can see Bitcoin, but I can't find USDT. All right. Yeah, so we got it right here. This is one of their wallets right here. Um, change. Can I click on this and learn more about it though? Search. Down 2%, that's, that's not crazy. I guess it's all at a dollar. It must just be something with Binance, it has to be. Tether Holders is going up, that's nice to see. I just want to click on it though, and I want to see the transactions and stuff. But that's okay, probably not going to allow me to do that. Um, thanks Mustafa for liking it. We'll keep track of it though, it, it's just a very weird thing. Sorry to kind of linger on it for too long, but it is somewhat important that we, that we know what's going on. But Bitcoin seems to be doing fine. Uh, see talk about putin no what do you call i didn't even finish watching that interview i got bored with it honestly i was excited to watch it i just wanted to hear what putin had to say but putin went on and on and on and i thought like tucker was going to ask some like hard-hitting questions and and never really came so you know i just see sparks fly when i see interviews and i don't really like to watch interviews in the first place i watched biden yesterday when he was mad about his mental capacity comments by the whatever person that was interesting he was fiery he was like Rah. but then he made a gaffe and i was like oh shit here we go um, but it, it's an interesting week, right? Politics is just fucking insane these days. Um, there we go. Right, hey, monster. Happy to see you back, man. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, let's see right here. Great night on here. Thanks for all the streams this week. No, it's been pretty fun to uh, stream this much. I've been just looking for an opportunity to get back in the groove of doing a couple hour streams, and this week was a perfect opportunity for it. Even though it was kind of slow at the beginning, I I'm still happy with it. Kyle, well, let me do what, what am I doing right here? There we go. So I was moving my feet around. Um, and now on top of that, we have to deal with all this crap with USDT, and I just, I, I, I just don't know what's going on. Right. What the heck is this? <laughs> it's just so fucking weird. Um, but uh, hopefully it's nothing. Again, Bitcoin hasn't reacted. I guarantee somebody is seeing something right now and they're looking into it. But I think it's just, uh, like I said before, I think it's just something going on with Binance. I hope it's just not because of, it's Friday night or something. USTC, that's different. Okay, hey, let's go here.
All right, so here, 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 here. Maybe the reply, maybe the reply. I don't know if the social media guy is up, we can see maybe within a half an hour, we're just going to see this all of a sudden spike back to one and everything will be fine. But, uh, I'm just so freaking so confused. Like it gave me a mini heart attack right there to look at it. And I'm like, okay, Bitcoin's not panicking right now. So that's good. Uh, it would, it would suck to see this rally break down because all of a sudden Binance is having some issues, right? Hey, the lab super just broke the resistance. Let's go check it out. And get on on Binance. It did a few minutes ago. Oh my God, it's, it broke out a while ago. So it's definitely breaking out right now. That's great. So no double, uh, no double top you have to worry about. You're going to continue to let this grind on until we hit that next level of resistance that we talked about right up here. And I got another one, but so far it's still moving. You should be pretty good again. This is that scale out level though. Um, you're not gonna sell everything because I don't think you wanna sell everything. Um, but you know, just ha locking in some profit is better than not having any profit at all. And then you know, as the price action kind of moves on over the next few hours, you can be um, confident that no matter what happens, you're gonna be able to take some profit, take some profit, take some profit based off of what you see. And so far, it's still breaking out. Another higher high, that's exactly what you're looking for. Momentum is still strong. And I mean, there's nothing better than good momentum at this point. Even Bitcoin, even though it's consolidated, you can clearly see which way the, the, the price action is going here. Let me drag this over right here and I can move this over back here and we're good to go. All right. There we go. And hey, Rome, did I scale a bonk already? Um, on the day trade, yeah, I not all the way out, but I, I'm pretty much out. I, I was thinking of going like 90 to 100% out, honestly, but then I realized how many times I've done that before and it continues to move higher. So for the day trade, yes. Long-term trade, no, I've just been adding to it. I'm happy with it. Even my longer-term bonk trade finally went positive and it's been a while. Like I know I bought it originally in October, but remember when I made that mistake and sold every <laughs> everything? Uh, I've been buying it back in and I was still like, you know what? Even if I'm buying it right now and I know it's gonna go down even more, I I'm fine with it. So, so far it's, it's working out pretty well. Um, Bonk though. Oh, it's still moving higher. Look at that. See, this is why I, I'm trying my hardest because right now the big resistance was the 50 day moving average. And even over here on the four hour chart, see that break out sit. So there wasn't really much stopping us except for this order block. When we get up here, uh, I, I may scale out of quite a bit of it. I didn't even, I, I'm not even logged into my account yet. So that'll be a, that'll be a hoot whenever I can find that out. Or whenever I can get to it, I guess. But it looks like it'll still be going for a while. Bitcoin's still consolidating. Everything's fine there. Just that damn tether. What what the heck is going on? You, you, you what do you call? Finance. Let me refresh this. Finance, you got me? Fifteen people have seen this. Hopefully everything's fine with this one. Because, you know, if I go back and look at the Tether right now, you go to the weekly chart, you know, we normally don't fluctuate all too much here for Tether. We really don't. Um, now, you know, July 23rd, uh, I believe there was something going on here, but it wasn't all craziness. Um, no, this, I don't see, I don't even know if this data was accurate though. We were, we were breaking down, I don't, I don't even remember. Were we breaking down that much in July? I, I just really don't recall. I really don't recall. Um, now we're doing this. I'm hoping it's just some type of glitch because that's what it feels like, right? Typically when it's depegging, you see a lot more volatility, a lot more price action. So 
I'm hoping they didn't get hacked or something. That'd be my worst case scenario. Like there's like mass amounts of Tether leaving <laughs> Binance, giving a liquidity crunch issue, which causes panic. It doesn't seem like that's the case right now. So don't panic. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what the heck is going on because if you're anybody like me, that you just you just a normal trader, you're just looking around and you see, look at your chart like, okay, what's going on here? What's going on here? And you're like, oh, let me check out Tether. And then Tether's like that at 92 cents. You may not freak out, but you, well, my initial response was like, what the heck is going on? So I was a little bit startled, but like, why? You know, Bitcoin's in a beautiful bull market right now. There shouldn't be much fear. Even if we eventually drop back down, you know, and so forth over the next few days, whatever, uh, next few weeks, you know, for all I know. Uh, well, I hope next few weeks for a nice down move. Anyway, it's just weird to see Tether decoupling like that. And only on Binance. That's what kind of gives me a little bit more comfort. Only on Binance. It was all a distraction. <laughs> uh, I wish Matic would stop sleeping and put above $1 already. I, I've been, I bought some yesterday. It's up a teeny bit. With leverage, I guess it's up a little bit more, but it really hasn't done anything yet. It's been this ugly grinding mentality, and I'm hoping today we can have that pop, which really moves us up higher, because we, we just need it to move higher. We really, well, I want it to move higher so I can make more money off of it, basically. Um, just eerie when you see something happening, but nobody is reacting it to uh, nobody is reacting to it when you think they would. Okay, that's my Truman Show moment. Those are my Truman Show moments where I think everything is just fake. Because I'm like, okay, that's, some, that's actually serious. But how many people are like me and looking at charts, besides you guys, you know, on a Friday night at 9 o'clock when most people are pre-gaming and getting ready to go out and about on the town, right? Um, I think I'm going to go out next Friday night to Seattle to actually drink and have a good night. I rarely go out and drink in Seattle, but I'm feeling like I want to go say hi to one of my favorite bartenders over there. Again, a trip to Seattle is a 45-minute excursion for me, basically. I have to drive up 45 minutes. I'm not going to drive. I'm taking the bus. Take the bus. I can't dress up nice like I normally do because I'm going to be going to a grunge bar. And yes, I do go to grunge bars. I love them. Um, but <laughs> it's going to be a fucking, <laughs> fucking hoot. Oh, man. Uh, you know, get some strong drinks. Uh, and then, you know, make my way back here, which is a cool $100, $130 Uber. But it's worth it. It's worth it, um, but don't even know how I got on that subject, but yeah, I'm just a little confused about what's going on here. I would say confused and over worry at this point, but in the beginning, I was very, very worried. So if you guys are just coming in, basically, don't panic or anything. Don't panic. For whatever reason, the Binance Tether chart's been coming down and building off of what we just talked about. It feels weird that nobody's talking about it, but it's been happening since about 8 a.m. this morning. So something is happening with Binance. Um, now, we've had a little bit more of a movement since we kind of started the stream. But if nobody is panicking about this, I think we're okay. It looks like the volatility started around 4 a.m. or even 8 a.m. You go look at Bitcoin at 4 a.m. and 8 a.m., right? It, we're fine. Um, yeah, right here, right? Oh, as soon as that started to happen, Bitcoin started to break out. No, 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 it happened right here. Sorry, it happened right here. Okay, okay, yeah, that scared me for a second right here, yeah. So, we're still fine. We're in a small consolidation where basically this four-hour candle we're looking to pop, hopefully, or drop, but I'm hoping pop. Um, and then test the resistance, and after that, I don't know, we're probably heading back down, but at least we'll test it. Um, the price action hasn't made anybody worried, right? Now I'm just kind of worried about my open positions. See, this is why I don't like it. I don't, I don't like being uncertain. It's like the worst thing for a trader to do. Uh, let me move my seat over here so when I'm leaning this way, you can still see me. I forget I have all these monitors and stuff like that. I have a I have a uh, a microphone that definitely moves along with me, so I should start doing that more. Is this new bull cycle or until uh, April and the uh, cause the having? We're technically in a larger bull market move right now, right? We can still have pretty drastic moves down during a bull market. However, 
if we have major crashes, they're pretty much just opportunities to short and uh, buy up loads more for the, the next big eventual bull run that we're seeing. That's the way I feel about it right now. But overall, we're in a pretty, pretty good spot. Maybe Binance crash USDT on their exchange so FTX can buy back it, buy back in and pay the debts they promised. Honestly, if the American government was wasn't watching Binance like a hawk, I wouldn't I wouldn't like be like, oh, that's that's impossible. But because America pretty much has like agents working inside of Binance, it feels like at this point, I doubt it's going to be uh, something like that. But I don't know what's going on. I have a 70 cent average price on Maddox. So I'm in profit, but I'm kind of waiting for the new all time highs, which feels like it will be pretty, pretty long and uh, wait to go still. It'll be long, but you know what? It'll be worth it. If you ask me, it'll definitely be worth it. Let me move this down right here. Uh, and then who was it? G D H G. G D H G. And you did say it was a stock. Golden Heaven Group Holdings. So this is a penny stock. It's very risky to get into, of course. And I've told you this before as far as like penny stock stuff. So I'm not going to read it all out because of crap. Um, it's trying to have a little bit of pop right now. Honestly, the way I'm looking at this is this is something you want to buy during the day and just ride the wave whenever it comes up. Right now, it has a pretty clear level of resistance where it's probably not going to break out sometime until later on this month. 15-minute chart. Not a lot of liquidity, so be very careful when you hop in here. It seems that if you buy too much, you could actually drive up the price here. So be, be careful. Don't like You want to turn a little bit of money into a lot of money, but even then, you're probably going to be buying in and selling with only limit orders. And you're not going to be doing market buys. Market buys can get you something like this, where you want to buy at 67 cents, and all of a sudden you're all of a, you like you do market, you're buying at 80 cents. Then as soon as you know the market level uh, goes back down, you're down quite a bit. So you just have to make sure you have a limit order, and you have to be able to see how um, the actual sizes of the orders, because you don't want to go too out of uh, too crazy. Because what you'll see happen in some of these stocks is because they're low liquidity, somebody will watch watch you and basically say, okay, this one guy, he just popped in here. He just spent like 5,000 bucks. Well, let me crash the price very fast. His stop loss will trigger and my short will do very well. Those are very, there's a lot of people that manipulate the markets like that. Uh, and it's, I don't know if it's legal or not, but they do it <laughs> nonetheless. Um, but this one's kind of risky here. So let me go over here very fast. Let's go back over to Bitcoin so we can watch this as it kind of plays out. Five minute chart with Bitcoin. It's trying to make a move here. But let me go over here to Finviz. Let me see the market cap here. $28 million market cap. It is tiny. Has a very small short float. It's not going to really be a short squeeze. It's going to be somebody pops in a couple thousand bucks and it's going to fly out of nowhere. That's basically what you're looking for. It's high risk, but again, high reward, high risk. Very high risk, though. Yeah, it was a 10 full half moment. Always, 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 always. Okay, so I'm more comfortable over here in the middle spot. My camera kind of shows it to me, but I'm just gonna like this. I don't know why I'm so uncomfortable. I know why. I'm in this fucking vest. I'm just wearing a fucking regular shirt underneath it, but I don't know why this vest is still riding up so much. Oh, this cigar just went out. It's had a good life. Oh, uh, let's see. T token? See, now I just don't trust anything coming out of Binance. It's just messing with my head. Uh, it, it just broke out. It's hitting a little bit of resistance right now, but honestly, since it managed to break above the 20-day moving average uh, and you're seeing everything kind of kick on to full gear here, I would try to buy some at this point and go from 0 0.02614 and then try to write it up here just to 0 0.0275, maybe even a little bit lower, kind of at this 0 0.02696. Now, if I were to do that, though, just let me double-check the percentage increase here. It's 4%. It's not crazy. If you're looking for something more of a today or tomorrow type of play where it goes up for maybe one or two days, that'd be my price target at 5%. It's not crazy, but it's fine. Um, after that, if you're looking for next week, if Bitcoin really can have a breakout here and go higher, from there, you're looking at that move that goes up here towards 0 0.028. Again, you know, it's 8%. But that's more of the realistic move you're looking for. And because you're buying right off of the support level here. So if I were to change this off, change this off. 
and I go to daily 15 minute chart, All right? As soon as it comes back down here to maybe retest, you can try to make that first buy-in. Um, you know, I am a little bit disconcerned overall with Binance, that stuff going on right now. But basically, if you're able to buy it anywhere above uh, 0 0.0259 in this kind of range right here, I think it should be an okay opportunity, even now if you wanted to. Um, your stop loss is pretty much just going to be this, this little bit of a dip that we had right around here about 0 0.025. Again, it, it's not it, the stop loss is going to be 1.77%. It's not crazy. If you want to give yourself more wiggle room, you can always put it down here. And again, you know, like two and a little bit over, you know, 3% maybe down here. It's not going to feel crazy if it do stop out unless you have like some type of crazy leverage. But right now it's gearing up for a larger move. Again, it's just kind of waiting on Bitcoin to decide whether Bitcoin wants to have that, that little pop right there. Unfiled finance is making waves already. Any new cigars? Uh, hey, Monster, not really. I mean, so I, I've been smoking new cigars, I would say, but this one wasn't um, uh, mind-blowing. It was a Galera, a Galera, Connecticut. It was, it was okay. It was uh, from Dominican Republic. It's fine. Um, I'm about to smoke a Rocky Patel one here. This one should be fine. This is Lancer. It should light, stay lit pretty well. Um, that one just didn't seem like it was rolled the best for me, at least it was, it was dying out too fast. Um, I got some new Cubans a few days ago. Those have been pretty nice. I'm going to buy some Fuentes from a friend. Um, let me see if I can show you the picture of those very fast. Uh, I don't know if I can hold on. Um, open with photos. There we go. If I open it with photos, I can actually. Edit. That's not what I want to do. There we go. Now this picture looks really shitty when I have it blown up, but basically, um, a few really, really good cigars right here. Um, and uh, I'll be smoking these probably sometime next week. I don't think I'm getting them until maybe next Friday. Or... Uh, if I'm lucky, I can get them by Monday, I guess. But um, they're really good cigars. Uh, it's freaking 38 bucks for a cigar, though. Uh, but this Lost City one, uh, a lot of my friends have been raving about it. So, here. Again, Bitcoin just consulting. Uh... I don't know, cigars, and uh, just some place. You know, a box of eight, well, which one is this? Uh, it's not, it's, uh, yeah. Buster, double Buster. You know, it's somewhere like, you know, 30 something dollars a pop, right? So that makes sense if you're selling it from a retailer. But yeah, they're, whoosh, they're, um, this is more of a, probably Robusto, I would say. Maybe double Robusto, I'm not too sure. You know, it's like a box of tins going to run about three hundred fifty-five dollars. It's it's quite expensive, but they for apparently they're really good. But they're like expensive. I hate spending a lot of money on cigars. I really do, uh, but <laughs> I do it anyway. There there are some guilty pleasures that I have. Right, I don't really spend much money on stuff. Uh, maybe I go out every now and again. But you know, like I said, when I go out next Friday, sure I'm going to be spending spend like one hundred fifty dollars on um, a ride back home. But you know, who wants to get a DUI in this crazy time? Oh, who wants to get a DUI at all? But um. There we go. Um, well, let me just light this up very fast. As the C-17 goes above my house. There we go. Um, oh, okay, a little bit of stuff in my mouth. Ugh, that's my fault, though. Um, but yeah, those opuses, I'm pretty excited. I also got some other cigars I got coming my way as far as some... Uh, no, the Cubans already arrived. I'm, oh, I'm not smoking the Cubans until la, 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 Super Bowl Sunday. Who do you guys want to win that Super Bowl? Let me know. Um, I got some what he calls Jorge de Monterrey, Equator number threes, and I got some Bolivar, Bellicuso, Finos. Uh, I'll be smoking two of those. Oh, they're they're expensive, but um, 
they're worth it. <laughs> just because, you know, you know how hard it is to get Cubans inside the United States. It's just a fucking hassle, but they're worth it. Again, it's not like they're $80, $90, $100. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're fairly priced. Um, it's just being able to smoke them because Cubans have a very distinct taste and they're very, very good. Cubans are some of my favorite. The full-bodied ones are great. The lighter ones, they're a little bit too light for me. But if you like to drink champagne, they're perfect for pairing. I guess that's how they were made. But, you know, I'm not so fancy as to smoke a cigar and drink champagne. I'm much more, you know, uh, cigar and whiskey, cigar and bourbon, cigar, maybe cognac. But I don't like cognac too much. It's too dark for me. If there's more demand for tether than supply, the price will rise. Conversely, if there's more supply. But, yeah. That's true, but usually uh, an exchange will be there to lock it in. So for all the, the tether being sold, they'll keep it at a dollar as much as they can. If it goes below a dollar, there's usually an issue going on. But it doesn't seem like there's an issue going on right now. Tether should always be locked at a dollar. That's the whole point of having a stable coin. That's like, um, you know, imagine all of a sudden the dollar is now worth 80 cents or 90 cents just within like a... Uh, uh, 12 hour period of time basically uh, it, it's weird it's not supposed to happen and again th uh, this is more of uh, i would say a glitch happening from binance's perspective was you know the one minute chart wait for this three two one see nothing happened see kind of froze for a second didn't it it froze I think. Oh, it just it just bumped up a little bit. Yeah. Let me get this back over here to the chart. Let me turn this back on. Uh, SMAs or MAs? MA, MA. Um. Honestly, I I don't I don't know. Um. Somebody else posted on it though. That's good to see. I'm just trying to bring some eyes and awareness to it. Because, yeah, uh, who knows? Binance? If nobody's talking about it, 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 it just, it's, it's not going to be bad, right? I'm just going to believe that if nobody else sees it and we're seeing it, it, it's not crazy, right? But that's why I went to Bitcoin, no, excuse me, Binance US. Fucking all the bots. Yeah, all right. Let me, let me just do one last double check here. Oh, I was supposed to call my grandmother tonight too, but I forgot. I will call her tomorrow. My grandparents are out vacationing in Alabama and going to different places in the south apparently not something i would probably enjoy doing because humidity kills my soul but um they seem to be having a good time with it all right prices usdt and it's down i don't understand what the heck is going on <laughs> this just looks so fucking wild. Uh, again, I, I I wouldn't worry about it too much, but it it, it it's just very confusing to me. Uh, you know, hopefully by the time we wake up, everything's fine. I'll get 15 minute chart by Bitcoin right here. All right, there we go. ICP is at a resistance level. Uh, if oh, should I drop some ash on this? My headphones. Hold on. Was not paying attention. That's the bad thing about holding Lanceros. They're just they're massive. Um, I'll clean it up a little bit later. Uh, as long as it's not lighting a fire. Daily. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You are correct there. It, yes, it is. It's there. You go. It's kind of looking at that solid resistance level up here on thirteen ninety seven. So there's a little bit of upside still left into it. Um. It already had this weird false breakdown, of course. That was kind of interesting. A little bit wobbly here on the oscillators. 
Wow, you're seeing a lot of mixed signals from this, really. Like, you know, back over here, you had sell signals kicking off, and then once the change of character kicked off, you can see how you can make an easy profit. Right now, though, this is like all over the place. Let me stretch this out so you can see how it's going positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. A really weird one. Um, it's a higher risk play for me, I would say, but ICP has typically been doing well during this rally that we've seen over the past few weeks. So, I, I, you know, I, I would probably still go long here, but I would just be extra vigilant to make sure that the stop loss isn't hit. For now, if you're looking to buy into this current level of resistance, your stop loss is around 1176. You're hoping for a larger ratio, and that'll bring you up towards 1540, uh, 1546, or really, you know, 1623. Again, I don't like to go all the way to the top. Somewhere down here is perfectly fine by me, but like 15 to 16 bucks seems to be reasonable. 1550 seems to be just right. Um, but you're going to be waiting for one single pop. It looks like through a really good day. That one good day, I'm probably going to be selling off around 80% of the position if I do take this. Um, but it is weird to see everything kind of bumping around and not really being uh, consistent here. But you are, of course, right that it is, at a low, it is at a level of resistance right now. Auto, auto, auto. That makes my life a little bit easier right here. And again, we'll just kind of keep on looking on to see what's happening with uh, USDT. Rolling with the Niners. Uh, there's a lot of people in Washington who hate the Niners, but I think they have a good shot of winning. I have no idea if we're going to see the good Chiefs or the bad Chiefs show up. I, I just don't know. Question, so my fund strategy is buying a few long-term names I love and a lot of dividend stocks to build up the portfolio while taking opportunity to trades and buying more of the same names. Thoughts? So, okay, so let me break this into parts from my head. Buying a few long-term names I love a lot uh, and a lot of dividend stocks to build up the portfolio while taking opportunity to trades and buying more of the same names. I think that's a sound strategy. As long as everything is really in a profitable mood, you don't want to, you want to be careful with names like maybe like Disney right now that are kind of in this weird um, battle where I think the price of Disney is going up. And this is why I've been buying more Disney over the past few uh, months. Nice breakout, though. Um, you know, I've been buying Disney over the past few months because of they're having this proxy battle, right? And, of course, Disney, what they do, they just added a bunch of dividends, uh, which is pretty nice. Um, you know, this type of stuff I'm always a little more worried about. But if you're going into maybe a few energy plays, I might not be so energy heavy right now, even uh, unless you're, like, really hoping for a longer-term hold here, like a really long-term hold, like three to five years minimum before you even think about selling it uh, and then being able to adjust it depending on if the market gets a little too hot or a little bit too cold um, not by selling and stuff like that but like um, well, selling if it gets too hot right you take that profit you just deal with it um, you know you give the money back with all the good stuff but that's kind of like the scenario I'm like okay be careful if there's a so there's something weird going on in the company uh, like if you go over here to CNBC Disney you're going to see a lot of wild stuff about them doing some major investments and this Pisker guy, Pisker, Pisker. Oh, Pelts, my bad. <laughs> Pelts. Um, um, you know, Wall Street loves Disney's kitchen sink quarter, but Nelson Pet says he isn't backing down some of that. Usually, besides that, I think you're going to be fine. Now, like, you know, you're going to be doing all the research with the names. Fundamental is going to be key here, not so much just the technical analysis. Um, the sectors I've been liking so far for dividends have definitely been healthcare. Um, tech is not so much of a dividend play for me right now. It's just you're seeing the profit. You're wrong with the profit. Um, I, I am always of the opinion to have a lot of powder in these kind of weird bull market rallies that we're in because typically we will see a pretty large dip when it comes to crypto, not crypto, uh, stock market. And if you go over here, it's like the NASDAQ and stuff. You know, it's not like it's going to be drastic like we had during the the inflation type of stuff. However, you will see these drops periodically where you see a lot of your favorite assets take these dips like uh, 5%, 4% dips over a period of a few days. Those are typically good opportunities to start hopping in. Um, but again, I would be trading with a mix of what the index is doing and of course what the stock is doing. 
Uh, a few other high dividend plays, not even high dividend, just healthcare. Um, semiconductor seems to be doing fine right now. Um, there are some nice dividend plays there. Stay away from Taiwanese semiconductor company. Just it's always, it's always worrying me nowadays. Um, Boeing's not having dividends anytime soon, but I would say anytime that sucker drops, I'm just buying more of it. Um, and then what's the other sector? It's in the it's it's in the bottom right of uh, this heat map right here. Basic materials, Jesus. Uh, if you can get some decent ones there find a couple they usually are working out okay if i can well let me just do this for you very fast i could probably find one very quickly there we go overview no i guess chart is a decent one Oh, there it is. Jeez. Now, for me, dividend, what I'm thinking long term is it's actually okay at 2% and above. You may want higher. Um, but if you've been looking at some of these growth ones, sometimes they've been doing very, very well. Um, market cap minimum of usually a billion dollars. Well, you can do over two billion. That, that's fine by me. And then just kind of go in here and see what's working. Now, you see something like Boy's Cascade Company. It's kind of been moving along quite a bit. You see this head and shoulders playing out with B&H Group Unlimited. Other industrial metals mining, that's Australia. Let's stick to the good old US of A. That's just my personal preference. Nothing against Australia. Um, something like this. Specialty chemicals, Shane Wars Company, stuff like that. Um, you usually find some good opportunities. Uh, for whatever reason, America has a lot of uh, chemicals. You know, 3%, not crazy. But basic materials. And you've been kind of getting those commodities and different metals, you know. Um, so I think you're probably already familiar with the space. Um, something that's been going sideways or sideways and up. Uh, I'm staying away from things like you may see right here. Uh, Air Products and Chemicals, Inc. Specialty Chemicals. You know, it could be decent for a longer term hold. But, you know, when I see it starting to break down from larger support levels, you know, that, that of course worries me. Even if they have a good profit, you know, something's going on here where you have to kind of go and do the research and you have time to do that. I know that. Um... So, you know, it, it, it's, it's stuff like that, but another sector right here, uh, maps, where be it, the visas and stuff, you know, I, I, I've talked about that too much, so I'm not going to like pump visa, like I can pump visa, um, but financial seem to be okay. Banks, not what I'm talking about. The visa, the MasterCard, stuff like that seem to be okay. Um, there was one in particular. Can I find it in here or not? No, I'm not going to remember the ticker. But yeah, those are a few sectors. And, and again, healthcare is fine. Healthcare really dividend plus weight loss drug equals profit long term. That's honestly what I would say. Diversify that healthcare. Uh, but if you have a piece of all the weight loss drugs, really. It's been a surprise winner in my portfolio, a surprise one. And I've been buying, um, you know, healthcare for a while. It was not because of the weight loss, but it, it definitely did not hurt. It's like buying NVIDIA because, you know, they're making a lot of good stuff, but then AI comes along and just like surges it. You know, it's not the same type of move, but you are still seeing a good move from it. Kansas City. Ooh, time alone. Go with Kansas City. Uh, I'm really excited. Like people are excited to see Taylor Swift. I'm more excited to see uh, uh, Travis Kelsey's uh, brother. He's been fucking awesome to watch. <laughs> You're smoking a cigar. I'm smoking a bowl, vibing to the charts. I mean, right now, it's a pretty simple chart. We, nothing's really happened in the last few minutes. Right? And we're still waiting to hear more about what's going on with Tether. Um, what the fuck is going on with this thing? Um, but you know, as long as Bitcoin's not freaking out again, it, I'm not going to be freaking out here, but it's just weird to not hear people talking about it. Cause I know for a fact, there's tons of people that use trading view, right? There's a lot of people. Let's get this. You got tether right here on Binance. It definitely does not look good, right? That's not good. Um, but tether on coinmarketcap.com seems to be just fine, right? So 
little dips in here and there, but it's, it's not a, you know, it looks like a dip, but it's really not crazy. Um, market cap is doing fine. Nothing crazy. Yeah. <laughs> One, yeah, nothing crazy going on here. I really just am, am stumped to figure out what's what's going on here. How are our other plays doing? Uh, whole bunch of nothing. The one that was down fifty percent or twenty five percent is now down sixteen. That's not bad. Up forty percent. Up three. Up five. Up uh, down four. It's nothing crazy. Injective is down a little bit. Ah, heartbreaking. But again. Consolidation means stuff's going to be going up and down. That's fine. Hey, Brewgrip. Uh, Shipring is the new STMX mic. It has all those pumps. Ooh, I do love those pumps quite a bit. What would you suggest for a cigar for someone who wanted to start smoking that isn't crazy high price? Um... Typically, when you're new to cigars, you don't want to go to the full body way like I am. Typically, you can find some decent um, Ashton cigars. Um, honestly, the way I would say it is there are people out there who buy cigar samplers or just cigars, and if they don't like them, they'll tend to try to smoke it all the way anyway to see if the second third is better or the last third is better. I will tell you to go buy a sampler typically. Uh, this is more of a new thing I've kind of been talking about with a couple uh, friends online. I will typically say, hey, buy a sampler, smoke the cigar, try to smoke half of it. And if you notice it's good when you first start smoking, it's really good or it's still good when you smoke in the second half, finish it through, you're going to enjoy it. But if for whatever reason you're lighting it up a little bit and after the first 10 to 15 minutes, you're just not vibing with the cigar, ash it out. You know, just it's just a tap and you know, and just let it sit in the ashtray. Um, and then you're fine. And just go open another one. Um, now, if you're looking for different types for cigars, as far as I'm concerned, while Bitcoin's kind of going more sideways here, uh, I was just looking at one on Cigar Page. Uh, they have a lot. I, I have a few samplers I got from here. So they got samplers right here. Samplers. They got a bunch. These Olivia ones are pretty good if you want something on the cheaper side. If you want something more on the middle quality, I, I would say, and Olivia is actually makes solid cigars. It's just, there's, there's, there's levels to it, right? Uh, what you can go is perhaps with a, um, an Ashton one. Ashton, that should be fine. Ashton. Right here, $111, uh, $111 gets you a full sampler box right here of 10. This is something you could smoke with some friends if you wanted to. If you don't want to get a box of 10, typically what I'll say is you can go over here and you can look through some of these ones in the, um, in the sampler collections that you may like. And literally just go over here on your computer, search Google. It'll pull it up. You'll see a link to it. And you'll, you'll see what it looks like in the box by itself right here. And you can um, see if it's a full bodied one like this. Maybe you don't want to try it out. It's it's really up to you. Uh, or what you can do is if you go over here, you can look for a specific website like um, Ashton, VSG, Robusto. These are very good cigars if you ask me. But again, they're kind of a full body, so stronger taste. Uh, and you go over here to review. <coughs> Just add the review on yourself. You'll see Cigar Aficionado, Cigar Country. And from here, You'll have a full review of what you're tasting. Uh, now, they will talk about a whole bunch of bougie stuff, like, you know, oily wrapper, whiffs of coffee beans, and smell of damp earth as I take a draw. Um, you know, a hint of pepper, wh whatever, pronounced nuts. <laughs> um, dude, I'm such a child. Um, <laughs> I don't have the palate to really tell you everything that's in a good cigar. Um, typically when I taste a cigar, the number one thing I'll know really fast is if there's a lot of chocolate flavor, like cocoa in it. And I really develop, I do love that chocolate flavor. Um, but typically a nice Ashton that you can go buy at the store, it's probably going to run you anywhere between 10 to $20. Most of the time it's going to be closer to like $10, but, uh, <laughs> some States have some pretty hefty cigar taxes because it's tobacco. Uh, but that's pretty much what you're looking for right there. Uh, but Ashton's a good one. Fuente is a good one. If you want to try something darker, but not too crazy dark, you can go with the Fuente Hemingway and go ask your local tobaccoist uh, about Hemingways or you know what you're looking for, and he'll give you a couple ideas. Um, 
if you go to a cigar shop, I would highly recommend that you go to one that's part of a lounge or that's part of yeah, part part of a nicer lounge. The people that are going to be helping you find your cigar are going to be much more knowledgeable. Uh, if you go to a a, 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 a box store, like a, a wine merchants or something like that, uh, they typically will, not, there might not even be anybody in there and somebody might not really be talking, they might not know much about cigars, so you might not get any good guidance. But a Fuente is usually going to be pretty good uh, at a decent price and of course an Ash is going to be good. If you're looking for something really heavy and flavorful, those Gurkhas, but personally I don't like them. Um, and then the, the key here is uh, something interesting here. After you get it, <laughs> you if you want to get into cigar smoking, which I don't say you have to, you should really get a humidor because something that I've been learning is a, some places, they don't have the humidor set to a proper hu uh, humidity, so it could be too high. And if you get a cigar like this from a high humidity area and you just smoke it right outside, like you, you buy it, you smoke it, it's going to actually not be very good because what's going to happen is going to have a hard time staying lit. Now this isn't, I've just been talking too much shit, but <laughs> what do you call? Um, hold on. There we go. All right. So it'll be, have a hard, hard time staying lit. And after you're, you know, uh, so wh what that basically does to you is it makes you try to keep it lit, which means you're puffing more and more and more. Um, one of the reasons I'm okay to let this cigar kind of go out when I'm just talking for and ranting for a while is because if you keep this too hot and you're puffing too much, you're not enjoying the tobacco. What's really happening is you're getting a very bitter flavor because you're burning the leaves to a crisp by keeping the cherry on the bottom a little too hot. Um, so it's really important that when you go in there, you know, don't don't feel like you're a snob or something or you're like the person who's mad at you. Just ask if they can see what the humidity is. Because if it's like 65, 62, ooh, you got yourself a good humidor. But if it's going up to the 70s, something's, something is, something uh, is it's not terrible, but you probably would want to let that cigar rest in a humidor for about a month. And like, that, that it's crazy that I say that, but like, that's what I've done now. Um, and it, 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 it can mess up a good cigar. So, you know, but again, Ashton, uh, Fuente is going to be typical ones right there. Fuente Hemingway and any of the Ashtons are really going to be good. You can start off with the light Connecticut, like the lighter wrappers. You can move away to darker ones. Um, and if you want to hop into a cheaper uh, um, once the Olivia Black Swan is a darker one, which is very good in Olivia V series. Um, you can screen record this or whatever, but yeah, those are a few options for you right there. Hey, Sniper TA, do I, do I, do I trade it like anything else? You trade like anything else? Depends on what you mean by trading like anything else. Uh, oh, you don't trade. No, you don't trade tether. Like anything else, Tether is supposed to be at a dollar. It's always supposed to be at a dollar. It can go down to 0 0.995, 992, 998, but it's not really supposed to go below 99 cents and it's not really supposed to go above a dollar, a dollar and a penny, basically. Um, you know, imagine that you, you have a bunch of dollars in your pocket. I got like, a, you know, I got a few hundred bucks in my back wallet. Imagine there's a screen that everybody can see and you see that the dollar is equal to $1. That's the goal of the dollar, to equal $1. But all of a sudden, think of it, your dollar is now equal to 92, uh, uh, 92 cents. Something's off there. Now, Bitcoin is doing just fine with this news. Cryptocurrency is doing just fine with this news. This is something going on specifically with Binance. People should probably not panic off of this. And I would say probably don't, like, don't panic. Um, because the market's doing just fine. It's just that uh, it, it threw me for a loop when I first saw this because, again, let, let me just show you what I mean by it's supposed to be at a dollar, right? So you see if we go back in time a little bit, it's it see how everything's like right here, like a dollar, a dollar, a dollar. It goes down to like point, point zero nine nine zero six, but it pops back up. Everything's fine. Something happened here. And again, I don't know what's going on here. I've tried to ask people on Twitter. I'll wait to see if I get a reply or something. But honestly, I just don't know. But again, if the market isn't panicking, I'm sure there's something easily easy to explain going on where people don't have to uh, panic about it, right? Nothing, 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 nothing. 
Nobody's talking about it. You go over here and you search for USTD, USDT, excuse me. All right? Nothing, nothing, nothing. You know, scam, scam. Why not just you know, post, 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 post. ADA, you know, scam, scam. Blah, 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 blah. Nobody talking about it. Nobody talking about. It, nobody talking about. It, nobody talking about it. No, <laughs> nobody talking about it. So I, I would just assume there's some type of issue glitching out with Binance, but it's not enough to cause Bitcoin to go down. Um, you know, Bitcoin, if anything, has just been kind of going sideways for a while, and that's that's good enough. You know. Sorry to make your eyes hurt with that one. It hurt my eyes a little bit to just kind of scroll down for a second, but I just want to double check. And hey, Canito, ha uh, happy to have you on board right now. It's been a pretty slow night because of uh, Bitcoin kind of consolidating, but at least Bitcoin's been in a good mood the last few days, especially going into next week. We have an opportunity to surge. It's going to be tough, to be frank, because uh, you're going to see a lot of people try to short into the market, especially uh, if we make our way closer to that level of resistance there. Try a cigar called Crazy Alice by Drew Estate. Wonderful cigar with great price. Ooh, I'll have to try that. Hey, thank you, Thest. Crazy Alice. Next time I buy some cigars, I'll have to check it out. Hopefully it's not rare or anything like that. I mean, I can get access to a rare cigar, but like some lounges have them, some don't. But uh, Drew Estate, they're, they're pretty popular in the lounges, so I'm pretty sure if I ask for one, um, I'll try to uh, ask for it on um, Sunday. Even though I bring my own cigars to the lounges, I will... Uh, frequently buy a cigar there just to show my support for the lounge, even though I'm buying food and alcohol <laughs> too. But, uh, you know, uh, it's always nice to show support. And uh, the tobaccoist, it's always nice to talk to that guy. Uh, I'll pay 10 to 20 bucks for a cigar just to talk to the tobaccoist for a little bit and ask how he's doing on his, uh, how his day is going. Plus, it's only, it's my opportunity to give him a tip. And, you know, they, uh, the, the guy helps me out a lot. Cigars have their own language. Thanks for all the tips, Mike. Yeah, no way. There, there's tons of opportunities for them. But honestly, like once I got into cigar smoking and I've kind of gotten into the finer things in life, as you would put it, when it comes to like just, you know, getting in more into the hobby, understanding everything about it. You got to be so careful about everything. There are people that will be fine just buying a cigar from a store and smoking right in there. You're not really supposed to do that because not every place has a good humidor. Um, if you want something classier. A Padron 1926 series is usually one of my favorites. And the 1926 um, series and 90th anniversaries. But those can go for up to 28 bucks a cigar. If you want to go with like something like classier but not crazy expensive, 1926 uh, Padrones, they're good. A little bit darker, a little more flavor. But if you want to entry into that really good flavor without like, like bursting from the seams, uh, it's a good one. If you want to go straight to the most spiciest cigar with a lot of pepper and spice to it, you can go with the My Father Le Beijou. Um I know it's French, but it's not like a crazy, crazy, like expensive cigar. But it, it really does have a huge kick of spice. It's like it's too spicy for me, and I've been smoking cigars for a while. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's its own thing right there. There we go. All right, let's kind of go through the list here and see what else is popping off because... You know, again, if you guys are just joining, there's no panic or anything like that. We've just been keeping track of the USTD on uh, Tether, basically, on uh, Binance and Binance US. And it's having some issues right now. I don't know why. I'm hoping that Binance US isn't having any uh, major issues at this point. It's coming down to 92 cents, but nobody seems to care. So USDT. Uh, and we go to... Crypto, sorry. Uh, you know, tethered to the United States dollar and Coinbase, it's perfectly fine. So something is going on with Binance US. So that's kind of the, the, the story here right now. Bitcoin still breaking out, trying to make a final surge up here to see if it can break out. It's going to be a hard ask. I think it'd be a lot easier for it to break out next week. Um, but you are going to see a lot of people try to buy in here or short right here and create a form of double top and actually cause us to come all the way back down to 38,497. That's going to be a hard thing to do at this point. Uh, it'll probably take a few weeks if they even get that opportunity. Um, but if you're looking to short, like now is the opportunity for the next um, 24 hours. It's a high risk situation, but man, it's a high risk, really high profit, like a really high profit if it works out. 
Uh, okay, back over here. And Bonk is still doing fine right now, still going higher. How's that Bonk trade we started? Uh, it's up 12%, not bad. Most of these other things are kind of leveling out, and that's what I like to see, especially for a, a dollar cost averaging trade here. A bonk is going higher. What else? Is Matic ever going to make a move? Matic, Matic, Matic. I know ICP is at level of resistance. We just talked about that. No, it's not doing anything right now. It's consolidating again. Yeah, Bitcoin's dragging everything back down to consolidation. Not crashing, nothing like that. Just consolidating. There we go. Hey, Patrick, I'm doing well. Just chilling out and watching the, the stocks go si <laughs> sideways here. Uh, smoking a cigar, enjoying uh, enjoying a good Friday night. I haven't eaten anything, so I'll probably be streaming for just another half an hour or more. And then I'm going to go uh, probably have to order some food or something because I really don't feel like making food. All my food. It's in the freezer. I got chicken. I got cool beef ribs. I got a whole bunch of cool stuff but I didn't take it out to let it thaw. My mistake. But yeah, I'm doing pretty well. Thanks for asking. It's times like these where I can see my face pointing to the outside of the screen that I'm always like, well, what if I just move it over here? That way it feels like I'm actually looking at the camera. But my seeing the sponsors page is too small, right? How could you guys see the Opus Clip logo? How could you guys see my face right here? There we go. I have to pull this up a little bit more so it's not blocking it for those people that like to watch it, stuff like that. But yeah, anyway. Oh, and uh, sponsorship plug. If you guys are looking for a new exchange or you guys are looking for another way to, um, another portfolio, basically, uh, you know, BYD, Fi, and Fairdesk are good sponsors. If you guys are so uh, looking for one, there's a couple opportunities for you. Just so I, I put that out there. Oh, and hey, Alan, I'm happy to see you back. I know I saw you get a little thing right as I was leaving yesterday. I appreciate you sticking around. Let's see. Now when I'm looking this way, it feels like I'm still looking the right way, right? Uh, forget that. We'll have it move down a little bit more. Hey, there's just not much going on right now. These trades are working out a little bit fine. That's fine. Let's get out of here. No news about CoinDesk, though. I think we're in a good spot. Yeah, if there was a story breaking, somebody would be on it, I'm sure. Those trades are doing fine. That's fine. Cigar, cigar, cigar. But hey, guys, if you have any questions, please let me know. Remember I told you, Vibe keeps the stream going, basically, for me. And uh, if Bitcoin's going sideways, I don't know what to do. Even if it's about cigar. It could be about anything, really. Um... I've already checked out Soul. If you go back a little bit, you'll be able to see it. Uh, what do I think about Harvest Finance? It's a long shot, but I've been buying some every now and again. Uh, I'm happy that's kind of showing up on more exchanges. So let me go over here to Coin Market Cap. Really, really small market cap. I have not been um, trading it, I guess. But if you go over here to Markets, you know, Coinbase, it's on a lot of other places, Mexi, whatever, it's there, which I really do uh, appreciate, especially since it's a small market cap, not everywhere you can find some of these small market cap tokens. So a good long-term hold, if you ask me, it's not under a penny, it's not even under a dollar, but again, it, 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 they're, they're doing some good stuff here. So let me go over here to website, All right? Grow your crypto, connect to wallet, deposit any token, and let Harvest earn for you. You know, we've seen this happen a lot of times. They're not, I would say, like incredibly um, crazy about their leverages, which I kind of like. That means they kind of have a little bit more stability than the wild ones we saw back in 2021 and like the crazy thing we saw in 2022. Um, you know, yield farming is the practice of staking or lending crypto assets in order to generate returns or rewards in the form of additional cryptocurrency, right? That's about it. Um, we've seen this happen a lot of times before. It looks pretty interesting. Um, now, if I go over here to the... Oh, I don't have the app. Uh, there we go. The APYs, right? Three, two, six, seem to be perfectly fine. 
They do got a pretty heavy one for Tether. I don't know why it's so heavy. This actually did give me a little concern when I first looked it up, but again, I still think we're fine. Uh, Ethereum, right? A lot of people want to do Ethereum right now. I don't know why. Um, but you know, hold it for a little bit. You're good to go. Again, this is not going to be a uh, 43% for like a month or something. This is a you know, APY, but it's fine. Um, I'm hoping, uh, that they get more users and stuff, but they typically seem to be doing fine so far. I mean, oh yeah, this is something cool. Analytics, right? Total deposits, monthly profits to farmers, farm stick APY, total farm. You know, it, it's nice to see that it's being used. Now, um, go to one year, right? It goes up and down, but hopefully during an altcoin season or something like that, it finds a way to spike. Um, but you know, I'm excited about it. Uh, let land stare down right here. Now, as far as the price action, oh my grandmother's calling me. I'll have to call it back in a few minutes. Seems to be breaking out quite a bit. It's at this level of resistance right now, but the breakout happened a little bit ago, so. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't be necessarily buying right now, but if you bought the breakout plus the bullish momentum taking it off, it seems to be in a good spot. For now, I'd probably be in a holding position where I'm looking to scale out a little bit, but really see if it can break out over the next few days and then try. Oh, 50 day moving average is also going to be an issue right here. Um, so it might not break out until tomorrow, but from there, you're going to look to see if it can actually start getting higher to around $44 then all the way up here to 46. There's a little bit left, you know, uh, uh, you know, you missed out that first big pop. The second pop is going to maybe take two to three more days, maybe even up to a week and a half, something like that. Um, but it's looking pretty good. You're looking at the beginning part of a nicer surge. You want to wait for it to consolidate a little bit more than wait for that other breakout to occur before you hop in. Um, it'll probably happen sometime. Maybe tomorrow or the day after. Um, Sunday is going to be interesting uh, because of all the stuff going on with... Um, the Super Bowl and stuff, because I'm not going to be paying attention to any of this stuff. But yeah, it, it's looking to have a little bit of rally. Be careful if you're trying to chase it now, unless you're trying to go for the higher move. You're still going to need to have a responsible stop loss, which at this point seems to be around $41.55. Not a crazy stop loss, not aggressive, not 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 like a not aggressive enough, whatever. Um, it's still fine. But yeah, you're looking at a pretty solid move here. It, it was a very nice breakout. I mean, just like how Bitcoin broke out, you saw a lot of other tokens do those same types of breakouts. Uh, spell token looks fine to me. It's been doing fine so well, but it's such a small market cap that you're going to have to let it kind of go sideways for almost like Dogecoin before it pops. It's a very low market cap. I like Dogecoin, though, so it can has the, it has the opportunity to go bullish or uh, parabolic, excuse me. I was watching Duluth Clothing Company. Uh, I saw your wedge and bought around 477. What's your thoughts? Oh, saw a wedge, not my wedge. Okay, yeah. Um, DLTH. I see the commercials every now and again. Man, it's really trying to find some support here, isn't it? Are they profitable? Let's see. Now this wedge doesn't really inspire the, the most confidence for me to be frank. Um, when I see stuff like this, you know, you see how it kind of broke out and it kind of like went sideways. Um, I'm really gonna look forward to make a, a pretty solid change of character where it tries to break above $5.14. From there, I think I can actually risk it to buy in and then wait for it to kind of push back up towards the mid uh, mid 50s, maybe even six if there's an earnings call. So oh, yeah, there's an earnings call, yeah, back over here. Um, March 20th, there we go. Uh, let me see very fast. You're, you're, you're seeing the, the, the opportunity here, I would say, over the next next week. Next week, you could have an opportunity, especially on Monday. It looks like it failed to break above the 20-day moving average. That's not the end of the world. The weekly chart's trying to find some support. 
Yeah, you could probably try to buy right now at 489, use a 466 stop loss, maybe even a little bit lower than the 466. What's the magnet say the real low is? 465, 464, something like that. Um, and you could try to buy in with a price target of around 520 to 540. Uh, now, you know, if you buy right now, 520, that's a 7% profit. 540, that's 11% profit. You know, it's not like you're seeing something crazy happening. But uh, if the short term, that's probably going to be a pretty solid play. Now, if you zoom out a little bit, you see this thing is coming down quite a bit. It's had some issues, you know, um, COVID hit everything. There's, there's no escaping it for most stocks out there. Um, however, it's trying to find a solid footing. It hasn't been able to do that over the last few quarters. But hopefully with the earnings coming up, they'll have a somewhat of a profit since businesses are still doing pretty well. Let me... They're not profitable. It's a very small market cap. Short flow is not too heavy, so you don't have to worry about shorts piling in on it day after day after day, which can really like you know mess with the value. Uh, let me see. So, uh, they really have a surprising amount of employees. They have 26,000, 2,600. That seems like a lot to me. They got a new financial officer a few days ago. That's pretty interesting. Or a few weeks ago. Earnings call. Mrs. Re oh, they missed revenue. Um, missed revenue uh, estimates back in November. Huh. This would be a more of a technical play, and I would say not so much of a um, long-term buy and hoping they turn things around. Um, they could do that, but right now it's probably not best to bet on it. So I would say you could be looking to buy right now, just you know, four eight. What's at four ninety right now? Four ninety up to the mid fives, make like a solid play. It could possibly go higher than that, but you know, when it comes to that, you're looking at you know seven dollars, not more than that, probably in the short term. Uh, and that even seems kind of excessive. Down here, five dollars, much more reasonable. You could try to play it for a larger move over here, but it hasn't even had a weekly golden cross yet. It hasn't even had a daily golden cross yet uh, between the fifty and the two hundred. That's going to be a really solid move right there. It could happen, but I mean, even actually, what even when it did happen right here, earnings killed it. Uh, yeah. If you have the four sixty five stop loss, it's not a bad trade. You're gonna know that you're risk. Not I have trouble with the R's. Risking. You're risking five percent to make about ten or twenty percent. Really, about sixty percent. It, it's a decent ratio to try to go after. Um, you're seeing the oscillators and the MACD try to turn around down here. I know it's kind of hard to see with my face, but it, the, the opportunity is there for sure. Uh, I'm gonna go back over here to this other one. Uh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. All right. Let's see, what's my thoughts on AMC? AMC has been kind of boring lately. You could play around with it if you want. It's just a high risk play. Um, you don't necessarily want to be putting a lot of money into it, but you can play with it if you want. It, it's just a high risk penny stock at this point. Um, if you buy and hold, you might make some money. Typically, AMC is just having issues right now as a company, so it just it's it's a hard stock to want to invest in unless you're looking for some type of future sort squeeze or something like that. I see you. Okay, hold on a second, guys. It's been a few hours. Loki wants to have a play time. Loki. See, as soon as I get his attention, he's like, "Hey, I got a toy." Yeah. Well. See. <laughs> this toy has a handle, but I never use it. Yeah, look at that. He's a big boy now, right? Oh, shit. Smack my monitor. <laughs> huh? Good boy. All right. Um, I did not see what happened to PayPal at all. Let me know what happened on uh, an affirm on earnings. Uh...
oh, geez, they got hit hard. I've never been a big proponent of buying PayPal personally, but during COVID, they had this crazy rally where I was very surprised. Look at that. Parabolic rally. PayPal is not something I like because, you know, as somebody who uses PayPal every now and again, it's just not a nice platform to use. It, it, it just annoys me. Now, I know my cigar went out, shit, but basically, as far as a product, I just don't like the product, so I just normally don't invest in it. It's like, I want to invest in Twitter right now because I see Twitter becoming something really good. Elon's keeping all the, the, the freaking profits for himself and his workers, fucking bastard. Um, I want to be able to buy into it at a very cheap price because the media is hounding Twitter every single day. Do you remember, do you guys like, you guys remember how often they kept on saying, they kept on saying Twitter was going to fail, Twitter was going to fail, X is going to fail, Elon Musk is not going to be able to revive it, you know, some of that. And yet it's still, still doing just fine. Still doing just fine. Um, uh, you know, so I want to buy stuff like Twitter. PayPal is just crazy. Our firm is interesting just because the way they try to help people, you know, be able to afford stuff, um, you know, and let's go back over here. See, th th just much more interesting. I like the theory that they're trying to go for. During a recession, this thing will crack and break like crazy. However, how'd the earnings report go? Yeah, earnings was okay. Uh, it came back to, you know, came back down today. But honestly, that's okay. As long as they're showing some good re returns and stuff like that, I think we're fine. Um, but it doesn't look like a firm had any issues. PayPal, though. Oh, yeah, look at this. Oh, I see right here. It had a very volatile time, it looks like. 37 back. It leveled out a little bit. I'm happy that a firm managed to level out. PayPal, uh, you know, a little bit. I don't use a firm, and so I don't know if it's actually really good or bad to use, but from what I understand, it's a very simple process of them just like scanning your credit and saying, oh, you can get, well, well, you can buy this now and pay us back. It's like a different version of a credit card, basically, basically. but there's like no card. Maybe there's a card now. I really don't know when it comes to a firm. What happened to the metaverse and NFTs? Um, so NFTs, I still hear a lot of buzz about them because there's a lot of artists in the space. Um, the tech behind the NFTs, non-fungible tokens, that still seems to be on a really good spot, especially going back to that keyword I use every now and again, infrastructure seems to be working out. Now, NFTs, they suffered a lot of bashing, basically, over the last couple of years because the value kept on coming down, the crazy prices people were willing to pay for them. Remember, somebody bought an NFT for like a million dollars, now it's worth like maybe uh, $150, maybe even $1,000, but the value can just crash like that. It's very risky to even want to go in there. And so people will only buy them during the uh, the trash times, basically, and then maybe they'll turn into something, but, you know, who knows. Um I think a lot of the metaverse craze and the NFT craze actually slowly just moved over into the eight AI crowd, excuse me. The AI field has been kind of bustling and you've been seeing a lot of people, even in crypto, just focusing on building up different AI tokens. That's why I've been buying more and more AI tokens, a little bit here, a little bit there. I have a lot of fetch AI. I have a lot of Ajax right now. I have a lot of um, NMR. You also have to talk about. There's a few of them. Okay, there's a few of them, but I, I, I got a lot. Uh, and I'm hoping that they have a craze or something later on next year or this year. But um, I think people's attention just slowly moved over to other uh, other things. And even though we're kind of in this bull market right now, it doesn't necessarily feel like it because, you know, as far as economies go, this is kind of, this is going to really depend on like how your per situation, personal situation is. It feels like there are a lot of people in America doing quite well. But at the same time, there are a lot of people in America doing very, very badly. And it's almost like the, the lower class was increased in order to make the middle class a little bit better off. But even the middle class had to suffer because the upper class was going like through their like, you know, the, the inflation craze basically, right? Um, there are people that have budgets, depending on how their family are, how their family is, whether they have multiple kids, whatever. 
inflation just fucking decimated people's budgets basically. And they've had to reduce their, their quality of living and all that type of stuff, which means they don't have all the excess money to really be tossing in. I think what we're seeing right now is, you know, a little bit of retail coming in every now and again. Uh, upper middle class people, uh, upper classes, even lower class people. So buying a little bit of crypto. But it, it doesn't feel like it's that craze just yet. Um, when that craze happens, I think it's going to be a lot of institutional money, a lot of big players coming into the market. The economy doesn't feel right. This, the, the world doesn't feel right. right? We've got like wars going all over the place and stuff like that. You know, I would still say the safest place to be is probably not NFTs. If you want to buy some, go for it. I'm not going to stop you. But the best way to make money, in my opinion, is just going to be to hold cryptocurrencies. It can be uh, it can be NFT cryptocurrencies, you know, that, that's fine. But crypto is going to be a much better uh, asset to hold. And it's going to be a more liquid asset so you can easily buy it and easily sell it when you want to. And you're not going to have to wait for somebody to say, hey, I want this specific crypto uh, NFT and now I want to go buy it. You know, I just want to go to exchange, sell it on the market, make it nice and easy. Hey, Key, but some of those AI stocks or AI cryptocurrencies are going to be good plays, if you ask me. Um, Fetch AI, NMR, um, Ajax has been fine so far. Um, those are a few. Um, I guess the RLC, I think, is one of the ones I just bought a couple weeks ago. Is that what it's called? RLC? There we go. Hoping this one does well. Ajix. This is another one right here. It's currently up around 0.9% or whatever. It's not like crazy today, but it's still making moves. And then uh, NMR, I think is the other one. Uh, that's one right there as well. Um, I think I bought a lot of this one because as a, the smallest market cap, I think, NMR. Is this the one? I do all this research just to forget everything when it matters. Yeah, $149 million market cap, you know. Um, not crazy. Is this the right one? Yeah, Numeria, the hardest data science tournament in the world, predict the stock market, yada, yada, yada. Um, but yeah, that's one right there. I think there's a few other ones, but uh, I, can't, I just can't recall them. It's been a freaking long day. Um, but yeah. Hoping it can make a solid move. We'll see. At one point, it was all the way down here at $7.27. Now it's, you know, popped back up a little bit. It's testing some resistance. Uh, honestly, today it got rejected, for, or the last few days, it got rejected from that resistance. But again, you know, it's, it's still doing fine. I'm still in profit. I'm happy with it. If those are for AIs, you know, there's always Bitcoin and other stuff out there for long-term gains. But uh, typically, you know, Bitcoin is something I hold, have a lot of money in. But if I want to go risky, it's going to be a little bit lower market cap for sure. You have 94 shares of Rumble at $6.44 average. Oh, I haven't. Rumble's been making progress. I still don't post on there because they, the posting situation just is it's above my head. It was way above my head. Um, it popped up. It's doing nice. Wow, look at that surge here. There seems to be a lot of money behind Rumble. I will say that. Not like uh, from a shareholder perspective. Uh, well, the owner, yeah, ownership perspective, yeah. Um, I, I bought this a while ago, and <laughs> go over here to the chart. Um, over here, yeah, right over here. I bought some. I'm still not in a profit yet. Maybe I should average down. Maybe I should have averaged down even more. I, I might have done it once, but I still think my average is pretty high because I went large just to kind of buy for the long term hold and see what it would do. Uh, I bought a lot of alternative media companies back uh, in 2022 because I just, CNN, MSNBC, Fox, they just don't seem to be doing it these days. Uh, heck, you know, Tucker Carlson going over to fucking interview Vladimir Putin. Just a fucking weird time we live in. Uh, and legacy media is just fucking in some trouble. Right now, it's going to be very hard to say you want to keep on holding this for, unless you're looking for something of a longer term, like literally long term hold. From a technical perspective, it's really just hitting up against this level of resistance and it's having some issues. It should have a pretty decent consolidation, then try to break out even more. 
Earnings reports don't seem to have too much of a nasty impact. A small move down here, a small move down here. Each time it still managed to go a little bit higher right afterwards. We can talk about here, here, or even here. Uh, earnings isn't until April or March 28th. You're fine. Um, but, you know, right now it looks like it just wants to consolidate a little bit. You see this uptrend right there? That's a pretty darn steep uptrend. Again, a little bit of a dip, consolidation, just fine, you know. But it looks like it may need to cool off just a little bit because it's had a pretty nice rally. But from a business management point, like business standpoint, they've been doing the good things. They've been investing in things they need to do. I've talked with a couple of the um, some stakeholders in Rumble, not necessarily the CEOs and stuff, but just the stakeholders who have the ear, of course, of the head honchos because they pay them basically. Um, but um. The, the, you know they're they're making deals they're getting content people are being driven over there which is really nice to see i just wish they would have not as much conservative content and now that i'm against conservatives and that they need to find a way to get more sponsors interested and that means that over time they're going to moderate not by telling people what they can and cannot say let, let's hope um i don't like moderation in many uh platforms honestly because i think it goes too far um but I think if they have more moderate people out there and the algorithm supports those people, I, I think, you know, everybody will be happy. Conservatives will still have all their views. Liberals probably won't go on Rumble all too much, but maybe if they want to, they can try to you know, insert themselves in there. Um, and then the, the more moderate voices can still have a platform as well. You just want spaces for everybody to find the place. Like, you know, uh, conservatives like to listen to conservative ideas put a con more conservatives moderates like to hear moderate ideas liberals like to hear liberal ideas you know let them do their stuff and i don't think rumble's the type of company that will like you know uh, censor liberals if they have a different viewpoint so i'm hoping that's what kind of comes down here uh and when they do that it just means more money i don't care about the politics of it it's just money and i think they're they're going in that direction uh i think they are going in that direction it's a slow moving thing I don't think it'll really get kicking in until after the election because the election is a a, a divisive time. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of those moments that the news always talks about. What are they called? Um, uh, what's that? See, I don't I don't watch the news too much anymore, so I don't I forget I forget that word. Unprecedented, unprecedented. That's all they ever fucking said. Yeah, it fucking drive me nuts. I'm over here staring at one minute charts. Yeah, no, it's like, the, it's basically just waiting right now, making a higher low and see if we can pop up. How's Tether doing? <laughs> Fucking shit, what is going on here? Like, I honestly don't know what's going on with Binance US right now. It's just, just like, what the fuck? Uh, Black Rifle Coffee? Ooh, that sounds really nice. Black Rifle is a good one. And what's your thoughts on it? Um, let's see. Small value, it's up against the level of resistance right now. Oh, we talked about this a little bit ago. Wow, uh, we talked about this in July of 2023. Wow, look at that. Now, it was not able to hold, though. And as soon as it broke down, boom. It, it I mean, it really came down. Ah, oh, it sucks. All right, let me see right here. So that means earnings was okay. They really just weren't able to keep up with earnings, it looks like. I'm not entirely sure. You know, day-to-day -day news stories and stuff. It's trying to have a reversal. It's trying to try to break above the 50. I think it'd be worth it to buy in here. Your stop loss is not going to be too crazy. 416 is buy in. 354 stop loss. Because it is going to be a little more of an, uh, a loose stop loss, it, it's okay to me because the pop and break out above the 50 day moving average should you get you back over here towards 577, which again, you know, 14%, 38%. The ratios match up of match up of what you're trying to get out of it. Um, might take one or two weeks though. It might not even break out. You know that. Sorry, Loki's yawning. But, okay, <laughs> sorry. But yeah, um, it seems primed and ready to go. I'm looking at some higher lows. It looks like uh, kind of higher lows, lower highs here a little bit. Golden Cross inbound. That's kind of nice. Yeah. This is setting up for a larger move. Again, 
you know, 30% profit off of a stock that's really, really good. Take care with it. You know, it, it, it's a $920 million market cap. It's, you know, it's going to be volatile, but it definitely has the opportunity here. Uh, I just wish there was some more news on it, but it, it seems to be doing fine right now. INJ starting to pop off. Ooh, please, please, please. Ooh, it's trying to break out right now. Yeah, there we go. I've been hoping for that one for a minute here. Now, we did buy that small position just to talk about it, but... Um, I'm just talking so much that I'm not even smoking. Uh-huh. Oh, no. We're only up two and a half percent. Oh, my gosh. Well, hopefully it grows up even a little bit more. I'm really hoping here. Well, it's more of a hold and wait for the next day type of thing. But, yeah, I'm happy to see it's trying to get back up there and try to break out again. At least we're in profit right now. That's all I really care about. Profit is profit is profit. Do I think uh, Ethereum Classic can pop off anytime soon? Yeah, there's a lot of tokens that can pop off. Ethereum Classic is definitely one of those. I've always liked Ethereum Classic, but it seems like it's really um, died down a little bit, I would say. As far as the fervor, still a solid play, though. Let me, there we go. I didn't find a way to have a large move, but I would still say it's a decent move right now. That resistance level still seems to be there around 27.88. Um, the issue with it right now is, you know, it's a 7% profit, which you're really looking for, I think, back up here. Is you're hoping that I can have another surge like this and try to go back up here towards $36.40? I think that's a little out of the question right now. So as far as I'm concerned, you're looking for these little consolidation periods to buy and do the breakouts. Um, it's more of a buy, stop loss, and kind of let it ride instead of buy and have a precise price target, if you ask me right now. Because I know we're looking at these levels, like right up here, $27.88, then up here towards $30 to $31. The ratios are kind of icky when you look at this one, to be frank. So there's an opportunity here, but you're going to want to grind this one out, just like kind of a Matic is going right now. Just grinding it out. Uh, you, you know, There might be some pop here, but it looks like everything's kind of going a little bit more slow at this point, especially since Bitcoin's kind of going more sideways here. Yeah, but the more I look at it, it's just like, eh. But you can see where there's eventually is going to be a huge gap up back up to those higher levels. I don't know if it's going to happen anytime soon, though. Hey, Ty, that could be it. It's a Friday night, you know, waiting for the Asian markets to wake up. Uh, it's just consolidating right now, nothing too crazy. But yeah, that could be definitely be a factor there. I caught it at 35, uh, 35 because I was starting to, uh, staring at charts. Well, there you go. If you got a good price entry, you're, you're in a really good spot. Okay. But, um, okay, everybody, I'm going to call it a night. Uh, it's been a cool few hours streaming with you guys. It's been three hours streaming. Loki's giving me head buds. He's wandering around here somewhere. Oh, he grabbed a toy, not my head. There he goes. Um, I'm going to take him out to use the bathroom. I need to get food. Really, it's about food. Food is food is food. I'm going to try to hood Numera long term for profit. You don't have to add a lot of money to stuff like that in order for it to make you money. Um, typically, I'm adding a lot of money to it because I, I'm betting. I'm betting big on AI being a cool little thing next year. And I'm hoping that can make me some profit. Maybe that can fund a nice uh, first class flight to Panama when I want to take Loki with me. But it looks like right now we're just looking at some consolidation and things will be, you know, just fine. But um, consolidation is never an exciting thing. However, when the consolidation breaks, then we're looking at something very good. So um, I'll see you guys a little bit later. Uh, if As far as tips for starters, I've, I did it a little bit earlier. Don't trade until you're ready. Do a lot of paper trading and look at a lot of books and... Um, uh, YouTube videos. Simple thing is change your characters, smart money concepts, paper trade with that, and then from there add on your candlestick patterns, your uh, fair value gaps, and things like that. It'll go a long way. So have a great rest of your night, everybody. I know some of you guys are like up really early or it's up really late. Um, 
I appreciate you guys watching with me today. It seems that me being more vibrant and stuff and maybe not being so depressed in life and things like that has led to more views. So I do appreciate that quite a bit. Although maybe three hours was a little bit long. I don't care. I enjoyed it. Thanks again.